Oh, hi. It's me. <laughs> What's up, y'all? I'm having so many technical difficulties, but we're, we're in here. Hopefully, this stuff is going to be working out, so um, bear with me, but I'm basically going to be calling and editing the last wedding I did, or my first wedding of the year, so you all will be able to hang out with me while I'm doing that, ask me any questions about anything that I'm doing or about the wedding itself, and kind of go from there. This wedding, I got a whole bunch of footage for too, so I should be doing a behind the scenes of it as well. Um, it's gonna take me a hot minute to get there though. Usually I like to edit the photos first before I even start touching the video, cause it's just much easier that way, so yeah. Um, and before I get up in there, let me, I'm still kind of setting up my area, making sure it looks, making sure it looks right. Audio is delayed. There's no way. Yeah, everything is just so like. Today is the worst. I couldn't open. I couldn't open Lightroom. I was having all these issues. A look at that Inception. Y'all can see me there in the corner. The worst. The worst. All right. There we go. So we are in photo mechanic to start out. And we'll be kind of culling from there. I wish, you know what, let me, let me change the angle of my, my camera a little bit. See if that works for me, yeah. That's what we want. Let's see, we got Chile in the house. We got Belgium in the house. We got the UK. Y'all coming from the whole world. Audio slightly delayed. I don't even understand how. We got my boy Josiah Blizzard up in here. Definitely check out his channel if you have not seen it. Um, he has really cool, speaking of behind the scenes, actually let me grab his stuff for you real quick. I can't even spell his name, I'm the worst. <laughs> there we go. Check him out if you don't know him. He also does some behind the scenes stuff. Has a YouTube channel. Got California in the house, bright and early. What is it, like nine in the morning for you all? We got Egypt in the house. Fuzzy feedback, come on, man. I'm about to just, I might just use my Yeti mic and call it a day. There's always some kind of issue, can't just stream. We got Italy in the house, Miami, Greece. How's it, is the audio any different now? It's probably a little too hot too. Oh, you know what I can do? I can watch my own stream and see what it sounds like. Y'all are about to get a uh, audio inception, so I'm, I'm sorry for audio inception. Oh, we got my boy Kenneth. Kenneth on the stream. We got Germany. I can watch my own stream and see what it sounds like. Oh yeah, that's bad. I'm sorry, y'all. That's horrible. So let's see. Can we do anything about that? Here, yeah, I'm just gonna plug this.
my good friend the Yeti Mike. Uh, oh, we got my boy Kenneth. Kenneth on the stream. We got Jeremy. Yoon. Thank you for that sub. All right. I'm sorry, y'all. That's horrible. We're getting, we're getting closer. Oh, I, oh. I'm just over here dropping stuff. My whole world audio is good now. It's probably out of sync, but whatever. We can we'll work with that. Oh yeah, that's much better. Now I can turn this thing down. Actually, it's not so bad. Okay. No more audio inception. We in there. We got that audio. I should have just trusted this beautiful mic before. I always just let it hang. I need to get an arm for it. I had an arm, but I don't like to use it. It's just kind of all over the place most of the time. Let me just adjust, adjust my camera one last time. And we're going to do this thing. Because I need to start on this way. All right. Okay, 15, 15 whole minutes of trying to figure out my life. Let's go ahead and get into this. So, like I said at the beginning, this is me editing my first wedding of the year. So I'm gonna go through and call it and I'm gonna start editing it. We'll see how far I get and we'll also see if my computer restarts again because it's been doing that for some reason recently. Um, welcome to the world of PC, I guess. <laughs> I'm trying to get a Mac Pro. That's my that's my goal. I'm gonna get a Mac Pro at some point. My wife hates me for saying it, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna be in there. Um, I had a second on this day, so I'm actually gonna start with their photos. Um, I like to get the second photographer photos out of the way because I usually tend to not use as many of their photos anyway, so may as well just kind of start out by getting their stuff out of the way. And if you all are not familiar with Photo Mechanic, that is what I'm using. I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse and pressing five to five star stuff. And it's, it's pretty straightforward. I like to basically call as fast as I can. Can you show us how your presets, presents, presets work with event lighting situations? Yeah. I'll definitely get into that. If you hang out for a minute, you'll see it because once I start editing, you know, you have um, like the reception and stuff like that. So basically with the second photographer's work, I'm just kind of seeing what shots are gonna work out for me that I can use. I know I have kind of like the main shot, so I'm just looking for nice angles or something different from what I know that I shot. But a lot of this, like the groom section and stuff, like I don't need that stuff because I know I already have it. Um, she's actually also good about taking photos of me working, so it's nice. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, a J <laughs> JB collab. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> we are both JB. <laughs> a fully JB collab. What is Photo Mechanic? So Photo Mechanic is a program that lets you, it's nice for culling. I actually use maybe 10% of the program, but it is extra fast because it uses the actual JPEG um, like renderings or the previews that are saved with your raw files. So it's way, way faster than using Lightroom for culling your images. I mean, you can see me here scrolling through it. It doesn't have to load anything. It's pretty much just straight up. 
going through the photos very quickly and it makes it easy to just be like okay here we go boom 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 and call out the photos that i need hey francesca what's up welcome to the stream uh i'll take it oh nice she got a shot from the top i'll take it too So yeah, like she tends to shoot a lot of these with the 23 vertically and I like never shoot at all with the 23 vertically. So it's nice that I have those little separate shots in there. And that's me coaching the groom about the first look. And then typically my second photographer does the wide shot and then I'll be getting the close up of the groom. So this is yet again, the second photographer, her ca capturing the wide symmetrical shot of them at the first look. She also does these really dope wide shots that I always love to. Hey, Barla, what's up? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, photo, photo mechanic is like, if you're a wedding photographer, it's the only way to deal with your photos. If you're not using photo mechanic already, you need to get on it. There's me. At this moment, I do a Brenizer. Oh, that's cool. We'll take that. Make a cool gift with the sequence of him looking at the bride. Yep. Do you have shoot raw JPEG in order to use photo mechanic? You don't. So if you just shoot raw only, photo mechanic will be able to, oh, the sign's all dirty. Ugh. Because basically every camera, like when you're looking at the back of your camera at your photos, technically you're just looking at a JPEG, like rendering basically. What was the shutter at? Yeah, 125th. Got a little motion blur in there. Yeah, built into the JPEG of every RAW. That's kind of like, if you've ever noticed in Lightroom, if you, um, you like import all your images and they look a certain way, and then you and it feels all the way. And then you go to start editing. Oh, we got Man Tear Monday going. But you go to start editing in Lightroom and like the photo immediately changes and you're like, what? What happened? You're like, why did it change? Um, that's because it, you were looking at the embedded preview at first. We'll keep it. Yeah, these are, I love when I get a good second that has like really awesome, just adjacent shots to what I've been taking. Like I always take kind of like the safe shot. So it's really cool. I know I always have, I like, I'll have something that I can use. Hold up, she took these two? I didn't even realize. Me and her were like taking the same kind of shots. <laughs> yeah, Man Tear Monday. I had um a different Instagram account where I used to do Man Tear Monday where I would like, <laughs> If I was watching a movie or something where like, you, you know, the guys in the movies, they always cry, but it's like that one, the one little tear. 
that man tear Monday. <laughs> so this this part of the wedding was kind of funny because so we're outside shooting and one of the people of the venue come over and was telling was like they left like a cup on the ground or something They're like you can't do that and we're like cool and he was like oh y'all want to go to the rooftop and we were like yo dope we're gonna get in the rooftop it's gonna be hype we get up there and i mean look at this thing you can't see nothing because the walls are mad high and the walls are ugly we were like okay <laughs> we're like we'll we'll work with it i guess uh, here's me using a monopod to get a straight down kind of shot luca what's up welcome to the stream we got more portraits i already have a bunch of this stuff but yet again since i'm over here culling I like to grab whatever, but I'm much less picky about the second photographer's stuff. Oh, she did get some of these awesome. Man, so we, the timeline was all off. So we're like chilling. We finish up pictures and we're like, cool. Um, you know, cocktail hour is done. So we're gonna be great. We have time. We like, cocktail hour wasn't over. It was like, we finished photos like 30 minutes to what we thought cocktail hour being done was. And then we look up and they're like going to the reception. So we have to like run up there and try our best to get photos of the reception area before everyone shows up. And it was just like this whole thing. So here is the intros at the reception. Yet again, this is the second photographer's photos. I'll be calling mine in just a moment. Oh yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. Josiah knows that life. Cause we really, I thought we had time. We had like finished their portrait and I was like, cool, y'all have 30 minutes to go chill at the cocktail hour. We have like mad time. And we were just kind of chilling. And then you see this migration of everybody and you're like, no, no. <laughs> uh, hmm. I was surprised at what I was able to get. With being rushed up there, like I actually got enough you know, like when you get it and you're like, cool, I got what I needed. I'm okay. <laughs> Even though we had to like rush it. Um, so my my second, she's using like, it's like a cannon flash or something, I think. And it's like an old one at that. So you see her recycle times are pretty bad. Um, whereas on my Godox flashes, especially with the... Um, the lithium ion battery built into it that thing i can shoot high shutter speed like 11 frames a second and it pretty much keeps up as long as i'm around like 1 30th of a second so i don't get a lot of this uh, we'll keep it nice she got the signs again she's she's really good about like getting stuff that I may have missed or something. And I love I love a second photographer like that where you don't even have to ask them. And like, obviously you end up coming over and being like, hey, did you shoot this thing? They're like, yeah, I got this, I got that, I got this. And you're like, yes. <laughs> and that's why I pay you the big bucks. Like I tend to pay her more than most all of my seconds. What am I using for a webcam? I'm actually using my Fujifilm X-T3. So I have it connected to my computer and just turned on basically. So this is reception stuff. We shoot it a little different. So she's using her 23 it looks like um, at this point. Roberto, thanks for that sub. 
At this point, I'm using the 16 and I'm shooting kind of up and down at people. So it's a very, it's a very different look. So it's nice to have some of these in there just to keep it like kind of fresh and different. So now basically I'm just looking for people's reactions, any, any good reactions at all that I might have from her shots. Cause yet again, I don't need a lot of the second photographer's photos. Grandma was in there, she was getting it. Cause see for like most of these shots, in my opinion, these are too close. You can't really see what's happening. When you shoot for weddings, are you always in manual mode? Yes. So when I started, I used to do um, aperture priority because um, it was just easier for me. It was less to think about because it's a lot when you first start and it's just like, you know, you gotta run the wedding day and make sure everything's fine. And then also on the same end, think about the lighting and what it looks like and what your camera settings are and da da da. It's just, it's a lot. Um, so I was shooting an aperture priority when I started. Oh, there's me. That's right. I'd be getting down dancing too during the wedding. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, but um, no, yeah. So I, I started shooting the manual because I don't like, I be, I can't trust the computer in certain times or the computer, the camera. And I've gotten to the point where like, I wanna have full control over most everything. I don't wanna have to rely on me hoping on the camera. So that goes the same for um, continuous autofocus. I don't really use that at all either. Cause that's more yet again, just hoping and trusting in your camera. And it's like, no, if I'm gonna take the shot, I'm gonna take the shot and I know I'm gonna take the shot. I'm gonna put, put the little focus square on you and be like, yeah, if I miss focus, I missed focus. Not, ooh, continuous autofocus and you can't keep up and uh, whatever. Ooh, face detection, I, I can't. If it was like portraits or something of that sort, it'd be fine, but the only time I'm using face detection or continuous autofocus is when I'm shooting like portraits of the couple or something and they're walking towards me. Or it's like the processional and people are coming into the wedding and walking towards me. It's the only time I ever use it. Cause it's a very like, you know, they're just walking and they're walking towards you and the camera's like, okay, cool. I can see this. I can track that. And you're just kind of like, boom, 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 boom. All right. So that was the second photographer's photos. Those are all done. So now we go to my photos. Everything here is shot with the X-T3 and I'm using all the F2 lenses. And this is the first time I've officially used the 16 mil 2.8. Let's see, I'll switch for a moment. I have to ask for a webcam. Are you choosing photos as you're flipping through? Yeah, it, it's going really fast. You can barely see it, but um, I'm five starring them. So on my left hand, I'm just hitting five on the keyboard. And while I'm flipping, so that, and that's literally calling. That's how, this is how I call. I just go through and hit five. What metering mode are you using? I usually use the, um, What's that one called where it does everything? I'm so bad, I can't remember the metering modes. Let me actually, let me grab my other camera. It's like the, the circle and the four squares or whatever. Not centered weighted, but I can't remember what it's called. Someone, someone knows, someone in the chat knows. <laughs> Oh, cool. So for using your camera as a, um, as a webcam, you need, well, what I've been using is the Elgato cam link, um, which I can drop, uh, let me see if I can find it real quick for you all. Boom, 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 boom. Elgato cam link. Cam link 4K. Mm. 
evaluative metering. Thank you guys. <laughs> so that's the Elgato 4K and basically you connect the HDMI of your camera to that. Now you have to make sure that your camera is set to not output like the screen. So like the lines and the metering and everything that it has an ISO and all that stuff. So you just have a clean out going right into the camera and then the cam link can hook up with something like OBS and then so I have that in there so that's why like I also have like this scene where it's just me you can see like more of my room and everything and that stuff I need to get rid of this other this big lamp in the back I'm also gonna make a video about my plant boy sometime soon but so yeah this is just straight up this is the X-T3 I have my general settings on there usually I don't have much lights going on um, there's windows in front of me here and then I have an LED light back here so that if for some reason a cloud comes through it kind of still lights me well but yeah it looks good I have just enough separation I'm using the uh, 23 f2 on there so it's like fairly wide but not too wide you can still see me and stuff so I like it a lot it looks good <laughs> okay let's call through my photos so these are my photos for the wedding um, so one thing I'm pretty huge on to tell a better story is when you get to your venue on the wedding day make sure you shoot the venue and we're talking like one quick photo while you're outside just snap snap like this is where they were this is where they got married how cool um, and then kind of go on from there so yet again I always get there early and I start out with the bride and if I'm there early with the bride I will go ahead and do her details. Look at how idiot I am. I had my camera set to bracket still. So it like bracketed my first shot of the day, basically. <laughs> and I was like, great job, John. You're back on your first wedding and you can't even like, can't even function. So also one thing that's nice about Photo Mechanic is I can go ahead and flip my photos if I need to so that when I go back to Lightroom, that stuff's already done and I don't have to deal with it. Did you say OBS? Is that the software you're using? Yes. OBS, there's, so there's two versions of OBS basically. There is OBS, um, like the old school OBS, which is what I've always known, which is what I'm using. And then um, this service called Streamlabs, they also make like an OBS, um, which is a little different, I guess. I honestly don't know the difference between their OBS. So this macro shot was with the 56 with an extension tube on it, so I can get nice and close. And then here's a shot of the shoes by themselves, just to have some extra stuff. Which camera did you shoot with before Fuji? So before Fuji film, I was a Canon guy. I had the Canon 6D and I shot weddings on that for three years, which is scary because it has one card slot. I literally shot weddings on a one card slot car, like camera, dual, dual wielding. So I had two of them, but they each had one card slot. And luckily I've never had an SD card failure, but yeah. <laughs> I look back at it and I'm like, why was I shooting weddings on a single card? So lucky nothing happened to me. Cause that's the kind of stuff that ruins your whole business forever. You know, you lose someone's photos and you can't even say, oh, I lost your photos cause I'm not professional. Sorry, you get sued, you know, <laughs> like, and then you're done. Can you recommend a spot in NYC for post-processing? Not well versed with Lightroom. Not an everyday shooter. I'm an old film photographer doing my best as a wedding photographer. Um, I don't know anywhere in New York particularly, but I have used the Image Salon once last year. Cause like I said, again, I had 40 weddings and it, it ended up just being like way too much. Um, especially with trying to keep up with YouTube stuff. It was just so much. So I outsourced like one or two weddings. Um, and it was really cool actually. I liked it a lot. Um, basically they have a meeting with you to find out your style and how you like stuff then you call down your images send them to smart previews they edit it based on your own preset so I can literally give them my preset and then they just edit it then they send it back to you you link it back up with your Lightroom 
So make sure it looks fine, export it, you're done. It is like really cool. So here's the groom getting ready. Yet again, these are my main shots. Um, it's like you saw earlier, my second photographer, she had kind of like adjacent shots of everything. Buying an X-T2 tomorrow, is it a good buy? Yeah, so if you were here, Drake, and you saw those other photos from my second photographer, she's using an X-T2. So the X-T2 is still a great camera. I know the four is coming out, but if you just need something entry level and you're not trying to like spend all your money, get an X-T2, get a grip, especially if you're mainly doing stills. It is a really awesome camera. Um, I will say when I upgrade it from the two to the three, the three definitely was a better upgrade. It um, It's a little bit faster with the focusing and the, the photo quality does look a little bit better. I don't think it's the megapixels that they added, but something that they changed. I think it's the sensor because the sensor is different. Um, I can definitely clearly see a difference in the photos. Let's see. Is your 23 soft at times? I have many issues with mine. So Brian, um, depending on what you're shooting, what I noticed when I was on the X-T2 is that the, the 23 F2 would miss focus a fair amount actually. But when I brought it to my X-T3, that didn't happen. Um, so it actually, a couple of my second photographer shots, you can kind of see it, but it would just like back focus for like no reason at all. It's my first time having pictures of the groom putting in earrings too, which is kind of cool. Getting fresh, getting his jewelry in there. Let's see if I have... Let's see if I have a, a spritz of the... No, it doesn't look like it, so I'm just gonna I'll just use that. That's good. What is your criteria for culling? So I taught a class on this like a while ago, but I like to use what I call the yes method of culling, where I'm only choosing photos that I'm mentally saying yes to. So I really don't have a lot of criteria. Like if it looks good, if it's sharp, um, even if it's not sharp, if there's good emotion in the photo, um, if I kind of like what's happening, then I pretty much grab it. Um, and I know, oh, I do have some spritz in there. <sighs> this bridesmaid photo. So yeah, basically with the yes method of culling, you're focusing more on what photos you want and yes, because it's easier to say yes to things so you can call faster than being concerned about what you don't want. So I don't focus on what I don't want or what I don't like. I'm focusing mainly on, yes, I want that. Yes, I want that. This is good. This is good. This is good. And then from that, I get a quicker call because I can just go through and be like, yes, 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 yes. That's good. That's good. This good. This good. This yes, yes, yes. Um, and that's pretty much it. During your wedding day, you should have an idea of what kind of photos you want and like. So that's a big thing too. Like culling shouldn't be going through your photos and just being like, there's so many photos and I don't like any of them. You, you should have an idea of what you were doing already and what you wanted. So then when you're culling, it's more just like, you know, like, yeah, here are my wider shots. Yes. Here are my closer shots. Yes. And you know, you take a couple just to have some options. So like something like this, I take a bunch of photos because I want options of their facial expressions um, to see what's happening and stuff. Rather than it just being like, I have one or two photos. Uh, we'll keep it. Opinion on upgrading to the 5D Mark IV. Um, I don't have any big opinions on the Mark IV. So, so my story was, yet again, I started with the Canon 6D. I was shooting weddings on that. 
And then I got to the point where I was like, hey, I need, you know, something with two card slots. The Mark IV had just dropped and I was definitely eyeing it. Um, and I really, really kind of wanted it, but it was mad expensive. Um, and then the 60 Mark II was rumored to come out and I was like, hopefully it'll have two card slots because if so, I'll totally grab it. And it didn't. So that's what pushed me over to Fuji. So I, if I had the money at the time, I definitely would have got the Mark IV. Um, but, you know, not having the money is what led me to Fuji because Fuji systems overall, they're just so much cheaper. This groomsman just did this for me. He like held it up and I was like, thank you, sir, for knowing what to do. What's he looking at? Sorry if this has already been answered. Once didn't you say one that Lightroom doesn't handle grain from Fuji's well? What's the name of the software you mentioned? Yeah, so Jennifer with Fuji and Lightroom and Lightroom and you know, Fuji not being friends, I use um, Exposure 4. They, they're up to Exposure 5 now, but basically I do all of my <laughs> I do all of my sharpening and exposure. So I just do the editing section and making it look good in the colors and all that stuff. I do all that stuff in Lightroom. Export with some screen sharpening and then do some more sharpening on the JPEG side in Exposure 4. Yep, just gotta fill it out as you're selecting. That's really it. Like, it shouldn't be such a hard choice to call. It should just be like, yep, this is good. Yep, that's good. Yes, this is good. Cause you remember the day already. You kind of know what you have. You know your couple. You know what they're gonna like. And you have an idea of what you were trying to do. Some of these I can make into a GIF, I'm pretty sure. Did I have him? Ah, I didn't have him on button. So here we go, guys. Here's a wedding photography tip when you're taking your formal portraits. Um, this right here. Can I zoom in on that? Nope. Where it's like pulling on the jacket because someone has their arm up. Tell your groomsman, your groom to unbutton their button for that because you don't want that pull there in the middle when they're putting their arms up and stuff around people. Um, if it's not pulling, so you see the grooms is not really pulling too bad. They can have it buttoned, but typically when they put both arms up like that, it's gonna start pulling. So I missed that on that photo. And you know, stuff like that happens. That's the biggest thing with wedding days is just, you know, learn what you can and be prepared to deal with anything, but realize like you're gonna miss stuff. Stuff is gonna happen. There's gonna be things that you're gonna be like, ah, I forgot to do X thing. Yeah, I forgot. But you know, if you're performing at like, you know 90 95 percent that's fine that's what the couple paid you for um and those little things usually you know they're not really gonna know that's just more you and yourself so see i caught it here and had him unbutton and it looks much nicer yeah it's kind of all over the place but it's better than it pulling shoot on an xt3 and at times line sharpness is non-existent looks like clarity was turned way down wow yeah i i typically just turn all my sharpening down i think most of these i can turn into gifts i'm pretty sure yeah so here it is again i should have asked him to unbutton i'd be rushing through these though i do them like so fast Right, so then I finish that and we go back to the bride. She gets in her dress now. Your images aren't even edited yet and they still look. That's Fujifilm, that's Fujifilm. <laughs> this is Fujifilm. This is the JPEG output of Fujifilm. I'm using classic Chrome. It is so good. Like, I'm serious when I say like, I've thought, I really have thought about just straight up shooting in JPEG only. Cause like, imagine, 
I would just go through call some of the photos that needed some adjusting, just adjust it real quick, and then you would be done with your wedding. It'd be so good. And I mean, this doesn't look bad. If anything, I could add a little bit more shadows in or something with some contrast, um, which you could easily do that in Lightroom. You could have a preset of literally just adding some contrast and being like, bloop, bloop, there it is. Uh-oh. Think, yeah it wasn't it wasn't getting my five stars if you click outside of photo mechanic it doesn't see your keystrokes anymore so this was a test shot just to see if I like those pictures behind her because it, it could have been like a little bit too noisy it was the best wall in the room but it also like these pictures were a lot but luckily since they were kind of white and they kind of had the same kind of skin tones like red and oranges and stuff it wasn't so bad and i also asked her i was like do you mind these photos because sometimes brides would be like these photos are mad ugly so i you know i don't want to include them whereas if they don't look so bad then i'm gonna be like cool groom's jacket is dope yeah that groom was styling so hard i was like check this boy out looking fresh So my, my cameras are like out of sync, which don't do that to yourself. So yeah, these close-ups I was taking obviously while she was putting on the dress. So it's just like switching between my wider lens and getting the nice wide shots and then closing up with the other camera. Are you using continuous burst? Also, what aperture are you using? Looks like subjects are in focus, even if not in the same plane of focus. So that's a little bit of an advantage. I use all the F2 lenses. So like the 35 F2, the 23 F2, all those. Um, so in F2 on a crop center is probably more closer to four. So you do get background separation, but it's also like you know, it's like F4, like everything's gonna be sharp. So with Fuji, I'm pretty much just shooting wide open, especially with the F2 lenses. Now, if you're using like the 23-1.4 or the 35-1.4, it's gonna be a little bit different because you're gonna get much more separation. That 1.4 is gonna be closer to an actual full frame two. So, but yeah, this is basically four. I'm wide open. I like pretty much, unless I, if there's too much light, or I need stuff to be sharp across the board, I don't ever stop down at all. The F2 lenses are so good. That's why a lot of people are always like, oh, why do you shoot with the F2 lenses? What about the 1.4 versions? I don't, I don't know, like the 1.4 versions are nice. Having a little bit of extra light is cool, but it's like, it's not the end of the world to me. That's cute. So we had all the bridesmaid come over for the shoes. That kind of worked out. You know, it's a it's a little staged, but it's not too bad. I typically don't do that. I'll have like one or two per people come by and just do it that way. But um, sometimes, you know, you know, they want to include all the bridesmaids. So they're like, oh, everybody come over, and I'm like, cool. We'll just you know we'll work it out. But yeah, I love the close-up shots to kind of help tell the story and stuff. So this will be, luckily I don't have too much of it, but it'll be fun to edit. So she, when she gets hot, she gets this like splotchy stuff. Um, and I like to be very candid and real with my brides. So if they bring up something that they don't like physically, I will ask them how much they want it or don't want it edited. And, you know, you have to make make sure you have a really good rapport with your couples. But basically, if it's something you don't like and it's something that I can edit that's not too hard, I want to be candid with you about it rather than me editing something and then maybe 
you know, making someone feel bad because they're like, oh, he edited out X thing on my skin because he thinks I look ugly or something. So I'd rather ask them straight up about it rather than be scared to talk about it because it's much better to know what they want and be able to edit around that than to be like, I'm not sure if this mole on her face, I should get rid of it or not. And then you get rid of it and then they come back and they're like, oh, word, you know, like that's my face why are you over here changing my face you don't think it looks good and then that's a a bigger issue so so now we're in bridesmaids photos which i typically like to shoot these with the 35 yet again wide open at oh no i take that back i stopped down to 8 2.8 so this is another one of those examples of one of the times that i stopped down a little bit So one thing I, I personally feel like I messed up here is this is too close. If I need to do any cropping or anything, I don't really have a lot of space for it. I mean, I have some here, but I like to keep them kind of evened up, so. Here we go with the pose. We got a little group hug pose going on. Big Brooklyn made it. He made it in there. Are you using continuous burst? Oh, yeah, I missed that part. Yeah, I am. Um, I shoot in continuous low. Continuous high is, like, super fast. I only use that for, like, sections of things that I know I want, like, a bunch of photos on. But for the most part, I'm shooting continuous low. And then I'm just very you know, general with my shots. So typically if I'm shooting something, so continuous low is the CL. And then if I'm shooting something, I'm usually just like snap, that's one, or I'll, you know, hit two real quick or something. So yeah, about like that. I, I tend to take two to three. And because I'm using continuous low, if I do need to burst it more, I can just hold it down a little bit further, but. I'm trying to see. There, yeah, I, I want some where they're looking at each other, but not with the, the good old neck fat in there. I like to take horizontal and verticals of these portraits. It gives them options. Also, that's more options for prints as well. <laughs> okay, Vanity Fair. That's what I call those shots, actually. Do you use any face detection when you shoot? I do not. Um, I was talking about that earlier. It's just like, I can't trust the camera on a wedding day. I've seen it multiple times that like, I turn on face detection and it'd be face detecting like all the faces in the room and you're like, bro, stop. <laughs> the only time I would even consider face detection yet again is if people are walking towards me and it's like just the couple. But even then I just use continuous and have like a bigger square on them. I just, I don't trust the face detection. These are all with the 56. So I wanted to give her, give her that work. Uh, I was shooting the 56 wide open as well. It's so sharp, so good. And then we're off to the ceremony. Why is classic chrome so good? I don't know, but it is though. <laughs> I'd be taking photos like classic chrome. It's like just desaturated, just enough. Colors look good. So here's the first look. We're groom and bride getting ready at the exact same time. No. So when I do my weddings, I, I write the timeline on my end. And even if there's a planner, I'll write a timeline and then work with the planner. But I typically, I make the groom get ready first. 
because grooms usually get dressed quicker and then i'll go to the bride after that um because the brides tend to take longer in any way if i have lined it up what happens is when i'm done with the groom then basically hair and makeup are about done because no one wants to get pictures of you know them without their hair and makeup on you know like as bare as their face could be because they're about to get hair and makeup you want that like towards the end of hair and makeup so do the groom first tell him he can chill and then do the bride right after that how long would you say that takes to edit an entire wedding if i'm in the groove if i'm really in the groove i can probably pull it off in eight hours or less um man this was the worst lighting sometimes you can't you just have to like work with what you have um but yeah eight hours but because i have a life and i have a youtube channel and i have a wife and i have kids um i tend to space that out so i quote my couples four to eight weeks and generally get it to them in two to three um yet again as a wedding photographer and i think josiah talks about this on his channel too like you want to surprise and delight your couples that should be your goal so you know set realistic timelines for yourself her sister was in her feels i think that's her little sister too so um the bride is the little sister but yeah surprising and delighting is what that should be your goal so you know yet again say four to eight weeks and delivered in one and people go, <laughs> he got her photos back so quick because they're expecting it to be longer you know yep under promise over deliver always and then so even with me because i do the four to eight weeks um i can regulate myself because if i start getting close to four weeks i feel bad like i don't ever want to get to eight eight weeks is like a safe zone if for some reason i have like 50 billion weddings and it's just a lot um but that's rare i like this one better yeah eight weeks is i don't think i've ever delivered it i think the latest i've done is like six and i always hate it <laughs> and that's how you should feel too as a photographer you should just be like oh four to eight weeks <laughs> i'll just edit these photos <laughs> you know like no like deliver the photos do it do it fast do it quick So I love um, one thing, and I talk to my couples about this too. One thing I absolutely love about photography is taking things out of context. Um, so like you can kind of see it, but this was like a little, I guess like a little exit somewhere to like the back of something. But it had a cool little cove here that had a lot of that like almost ivy looking stuff. So as long as I can get rid of this doorknob or just shoot it like this, I was like, this looks good. You'd never know this, this was like some random little exit area so just remember um sometimes the good looking spots you may you have to look a little bit outside of what your common sense would tell you is like a good looking spot do you offer prints and if so do you print yourself or you use third party so i use third party um i use pick time as a delivering service if you haven't seen pick time definitely check them out It's basically like an online gallery where you can deliver your photos to people. So you upload all the photos for them. They can log in and share the photos with friends and family. They can download it. Um, really? Okay, I got it. <laughs> so like, here's my pick time. And here are all of my weddings that I've delivered so far. And then like, this is what it looks like for them. Ooh. Let's make this a little bigger. So this is what it looks like for them when they get their photos. So they're like, oh cool, there's like a hero image up there. And then they can go down, they can look at all their photos of the day. It's separated into different sections and there's also a shop included with it. And so this is where they get their prints. So I don't have to do all the legwork of that. I just choose which print house I want and then they can go in and get whatever photos they want, which is really nice. 
they can even if they just want to do a single photo or something so let's say they're like um couple portraits so they go down to the couple portrait section if i clicked it correctly there we go and then yeah if they want a picture they can click on it there's a thing that says buy they can choose the prints and i have all types of different stuff so see these are just normal prints you can do see other products they can do albums they can do all kinds of stuff so pick time is awesome super awesome so the reason this lighting was so bad was because all of this behind us are these big glass windows and the sun was coming down and hitting it so it basically was like reflecting and so when you have like different skin tones like this this is like the absolute worst lighting so like this here so he's exposed pretty well but she's basically overexposed and that's just how the light was falling and it was like the worst to deal with but i'm pretty sure the fuji has the range so we should be good here's my brinizer so here are all the shots i took for the brinizer the 56 gets this really wonky like light leak which can be cool sometimes but most of the times it's mad annoying so i had to do the brinizer twice and because I didn't have a, a hood with me, I just kind of held my hand over the front of the lens to kind of shade it. Here is the finished Brenizer that I got from that. When composing, do you worry about cropping off hands or at joint? Do you worry more? So yeah, I tend to worry more about the expressions, but I do try my best not to get any cropping stuff so this would be lovely but she has a little bit too much neck action going on um, so I'm gonna choose it anyway but we'll see oh my goodness this ceremony so yet again because of the windows and you can see it now we have a nice shady area and then we have this big the Sun was just right there cutting right through so everyone was like walking up and then just being like, da -da, overexposed. Um, so we'll see what we can do with that. Ah, missed my focus. We're still gonna keep it though. So you'll see here, at first I just kind of let it roll and I'm just like, oh my goodness, overexposed. And then by the time I get to like, the third set of people coming through what I'm doing and yet again this is an advantage of a mirrorless camera so if you don't if you don't shoot mirrorless you might want to look at it but since I can see the exposure inside of my camera I just literally turned down the exposure while I was shooting so that once they got here they wouldn't be totally overexposed so I did that for the next couple of people coming through and it's funny how different the shots are because it's like oh nice nice shaded shot and then ooh super moody <laughs> oh look it's so nice and shaded moody so it's the same with hers it's like oh the bride comes out how nice everyone's standing and super moody So I usually take one or two safe shots of the groom, but my second photographer, I knew I could trust her, so I didn't take as many. That sick, never tried the Brenizer. Brenizer, yo, in 2016, I think it was, I had lived for the Brenizer. I, like, that's all I did. I Brenizered everything. Brenizer method is cool, but it, it also, it takes time and stuff. So basically, um, what it is, or a, a bokeh pano, as they call it, is, you shoot with a telephoto lens. So I was shooting that with a 56, or you can use something like a 90 or 135. And so that you can still have a wide photo, you take a bunch of different photos. So you still get that like blurry background, but you get a closer look. Um, I'm actually gonna be shooting a video explaining it probably next week. But also the dude, Reggie Ballesteros, he just released one. Let me link that for you all. He actually does a really, really good job of explaining what the Brenizer method is and stuff. Um, so definitely check it out. Here's his video. And then I'll have mine up 
hopefully soon. I'm like a little extra, so I rented the uh, Atomos Ninja 5 so that I can record the screen because I want you all to be able to actually see within my camera my approach to the Brenizer method and how I focus and all that stuff. Yeah, I put, just, just so y'all know, I'd be putting a lot of time and effort into my YouTube videos. <laughs> I spend so much money for like no reason. I just be like, I, I have to have it this way. I want it. <laughs> Why are you renting this expensive monitor? Because I need it. Honestly, I'm about to buy one. So here's the ceremony. Very straightforward. For the most part, I'm chilling in the middle of the aisle. Um, so the photos are very just like center aisle, very straightforward. Um, I do move around. So this was with the 56. So I did have to walk up closer to get that shot, but it's not really, it's not that big of an issue. So like, that's a great shot. So I'm just like, you know, looking and waiting for expressions and stuff. Here's another Brenizer. This one did not work out so well. I think I was too close. Um, I may try and see if I can connect it again, but yeah, this one didn't work out. And I hate when that happens. You like take a bunch of time. Oh wow, my XT30 is totally out of sync. This was a shot I took on a monopod. appreciate your sacrifices <laughs> yeah my my wife hates it <laughs> every other day i'm like i'm gonna buy this thing and she's like man and then it ends up like working out or just being a really good investment and, just, and then that makes her even more mad she's like man you just out here spending this money and then like it works out for you I'm like, yeah, girl, that's a, that's an entrepreneur for you. <laughs> there they go, doing the rings. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was like the end of the, that was like the second kiss. Oh, camera's out of sync? That's actually a great question. So when you shoot with a second photographer or if you're shooting with two cameras, you wanna sync up their time and date and all that stuff. Because if not, what happens is when you get into Lightroom, your photos are gonna be all like over the place. And it makes it way harder to edit, especially if you're working with two cameras. So this is something I've been messing up recently and I need to start doing it, especially when the ceremony is backlit. So I should have put my flash on my camera here. I can still work with this. Oh, Kevin, thanks for that. Thanks for that super chat. Um, This is backlit and the XC3 can handle this. I can, I can edit this, but I rather would have flashed it just a little bit. And yet again, I would still use my same method. Basically, flash on camera with the mag sphere on top and just pop it in just a little bit, like with a 32, 132 power, something like that. Because this is like questionably dark and it's gonna be a little grainy and stuff. We can work with it, it'll be fine. You see my shutter's kinda low again, a little bit of blur and stuff, but. And this has happened to me like a couple of times. Thank you so much, Kevin, really do appreciate it. Oh, this is too low shutter. This is cool. Yeah, like a flash would have been great in this little area. These will be black and white, basically. <laughs> Here's the first kiss, which I might make into a GIF. Because with the first kiss, I typically will use high shutter. Yeah, I'll use high shutter and just let it run. So I can basically turn that into a GIF if I want to. There's my bag, chilling. There's my second photographer's bag. <laughs> How much 
how many images do you usually comb through during the process and how many do you deliver so i would say during a wedding i tend to take at max like seven thousand photos maybe more sometimes um and then I tend to come away with, with somewhere an average of around 650. Oh yeah, that's the one that my second got, but I like her version better. She just had a better angle of everything. So here is the family photos. This is very straightforward. For my family photos, I typically always make them make a list. That way I can literally call out people's names and just like do it. You do not want to waste your time on family photos like seriously they will eat your whole day away this couple was really good too some couples have a hard time like kind of narrowing down the photos they want this couple was like this group that group this group that group that's it no more photos please and, and then there's usually like a mom or two that are like can we uh we do a photo of whatever and i'm just like you know i'm i'm always open to other photos as well so it's not like i'm like it's not on the list we're not taking it you know don't don't treat people like that but you know for the most part i refer to the couple and i'm like well the couple made the list so if they want to do something else like that's what we can do But for the most part, you know, the list is the winner. A groomsman or someone wanted to do this shot. And so that's another fun thing at weddings is like when people be suggesting photos and you're just like, yeah. Um, sometimes if they're not too bad, I'll do them. Other times I will shut people down. I'll be like, no, we ain't got time for that. And I'm the photographer. And that's, that's not a photo. It's not going to work. You know what I mean? Like. Oh, yeah, this was when the guy was like, oh, you want to take photos on the roof? And we were like, oh, hype. And then we got up there and it was like, oh, here's a little close up. I like these little his and her shots, as I call them. Their hands just happen to be there. How many images do you usually come through? We did that. How can you choose 50 photos and 700? You just, you just gotta get in there, you gotta do it. So these are fun little like moving around shots. A lot of them will probably be black and white. So here goes the rooftop that wasn't great. You see me here bracketing the shots. Um, the title image for this video was what I ended up with. I like composited a bunch of shots and things. Uh, these are okay, but these little blocks are like the most annoying and because of the wall and she she's short she's like four foot three or something um the lighting here is all kinds of over the place this is the main shot i used so i had to get rid of this roof area and stuff and then yeah i'll probably grab a couple of these oh i still had my camera set on bracket by accident then we're on to the portrait so usually when I'm doing portraits of my couples I always throw in some kind of solo portraits as well you know every every parent you know wants a photo of their child by themselves so don't feel bad like oh but they're married we should only take photos together like it's it's fine um, obviously you shouldn't waste all of your time doing the solo shots but you know get in there throw a couple in do them real quick you know it's not going to take up too much of your time then we did the groom real fast are you using auto iso or any auto settings no the only auto would be white balance which is why in this scene it's kind of all over the place which i kind of wish i didn't use auto white balance at this point i should have i should have kelvin it at this point because 
the lighting was weird it was like the way the light was bouncing off of the windows behind us that were basically like mirrors it like auto white balance didn't know what to do so <laughs> i wish i would have shot that in kelvin this was me getting my full room shot as everyone was like walking in and see like they just came in so this is one of the corners so it's not the best full room shot like i could have gotten a bigger full room shot but this is acceptable like you can see the room enough you can see the tables you can see the style of the tables um then it was like a quick rush to like grab a table get a couple shots of what's on the table real quick because literally people were coming in moved on to the cake got the cake shots and i mean i did this in like five minutes if if even And that's probably um, one of the bigger advantages of not shooting with a lot of off-camera flash um, is that when something pops off like that, I can just run in and take the photos real quick if I needed to. Whereas if I did all my shots and they had to be off-camera flash and that's just how I shot things, I would have been kind of SOL because it would have been like, oh, my lights, I'm not ready, oh, God, oh. But on the same end, um, usually photographers who do that they set their lights up earlier in the day so the shoot the roof shot was stellar thank you yeah let me let me show that shot real quick just show y'all can see because it was like it was totally composited i took i took a shot for my second photographer and i took my own shot and i removed the roof on the top and then i added some extra little whatever stuff Yeah, that was this lovely photo here. So like a lot of these, like this light stuff, I added that in. This one down here at the bottom is natural. It came from my second photographer's photo, but her photo looked a little different. So I just kind of composited it into mine. And then remember with mine, it had like the roof across the top. So I got rid of that as well. So here go intros. At this point, I'm using flash. So you can see my settings. I'm at ISO 1000. I'm using the 16, so I'm at 2.8 wide open. My shutter is 1 60th, and then I have my flash. Flash power was probably around 1 32nd, somewhere in there. And then I'm using on high shutter. And this is where I use some continuous focus at this point. So with the continuous autofocus, I just have it set where I have, so you go to C on the front of your camera for Fuji, and then I switch my zone to zone instead of single point, and I'll make it a little bit of a bigger square. I don't know if this is gonna focus. So I make it a bigger square, kind of like that. And then basically I just aim that bigger square. I have bat back button focus set up on my Fuji so AFL is my back button and I just hold that and let it continuous autofocus and then I just high shutter and point it that way I can move with them and worry about where I'm moving and not have to worry about the focus because I know it's going to hit the focus for the most part man I hate when this happens so they came out all separate like they all came out together rather than separately so luckily they were spaced out enough but that was a little too much for the walking shots are you focusing on their faces not really just the body so i have that big square because yet again i mean this lens that i'm using is a 2.8 and yet again because it's crop sensor 2.8 that's like nearly five like f5 um, so most everything's gonna be in focus So yeah, I just make sure that square is on them and the square is pretty much gonna focus on it And I've never really had a big problem with it before but as you see it happened like it missed the focus a little bit here While it was adjusting it was on it adjusted it was off a little so You have to pick and choose your battles Ooh. 
So yeah, just high shredder through. Here's the video guy I hired. He's actually hired to take video for me, not for the couple. Um, so yeah, there's definitely gonna be a full wedding day of this wedding, at least by next month, I would hope. So here's their first dance. My second photographer trying to dodge out. I'm gonna have to get rid of her. So stuff like this, this was like the dad or somebody. I told him to move. Um, and don't feel bad, don't feel bad telling people to move. He's like all up in it. Look at this wonderful dip shot that I actually caught because dip shots are hard to catch because they're like dancing and you don't know where they're gonna end up. And then you got the dad back here with his iPhone just chilling. It's like, really, bruh? Come on, man. So yeah, I hit him off with the bro move. <laughs> so here are my close-up shots with the 35. For the most part, I don't really totally use continuous. I will sometimes, but especially the 35, most of the time can't keep up with the first dance. So I'm usually shooting a little bit heavy at this point because I know it has a hard time with the focus. Here's father-daughter dance. And see, this is what I was talking about with the cameras being in sync. We got my boy Ike up in here. Photo me Ike. If you don't know him, you need to check him out for real. I'm about to link his page as well. Here is the man Ike. Definitely check him out. He tends to do more portrait stuff. So I'm very wedding. He's more portrait, model portrait type stuff, which is awesome. For the walking shots or for the faces, how many photos do you take every wedding? It's typically around 7,000 or so. Um, I'll let y'all know this one once I'm done calling, which we're just about at the end here. So the only thing, you see how the lighting here is very flat? Cause that's cause the flash is on my camera. So this works cause I bump up the, I, not the ISO, the exposure in Lightroom and it works. But that's why a lot of people use off camera flash cause you can light up the, your subject a little bit better and not have to deal with just the exposure in Lightroom. But the thing I don't like about the off camera flash look at receptions is it leaves a lot of like shadows all over the place so that's generally why i do on camera flash instead and typically what it does is it's gonna light up my subject when i'm close enough to them because yet again i'm shooting pretty wide so that's another thing if you shoot further like you don't like to be anywhere close to the dance floor then you're probably going to want to do more off camera flash this works for me because I'm on a 35 mil, which is like a 50, so I'm fairly close to them. The background is just lit up from ambient light and the fact that I bumped my ISO up. So it's just, just a different style and approach. Um, don't think that you have to do off-camera flash, but you need to know how to do on-camera flash to one, make it look good, and to get the results you want. Don't ever just think like, I know everything, I can do whatever. Like Learn both methods and then find which one you like the most. <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> we got Belgium in the house <laughs> 7,000 yeah I, I kind of overshoot sometimes I be in there shooting I feel like I probably overshot at this wedding I'm sure I did I've seen a lot more of the like mother bride dances recently. It's kind of sweet. Cause you know, like, oh, if you had a daughter and basically the mom raised her most of the time, you know what I mean? And it's like father daughter dance. Oh, but who cares about mom who did all the work? 
do you use diffusers on your camera flash while you're pointing it towards the wall ceiling? I do. So I'm using the Mag Sphere. Um, I think I have, yeah, I have them. I have them in my trusty bag here. So here's my flash, the V860 II. F is the Fujifilm version, but they make this for every camera system. So Canon, Nikon, Sony, it's all there. Panasonic, I think. So Godox, they're super easy to use. I love the Godox system. And then you see I have this black magnet thing. That's the MagMod. And so I throw the sphere on top. So with the sphere, basically what's happening is it's kind of like a bounce flash. So you know a lot of people talk about like, bounce flash you bounce it off the ceiling and it works and if your ceiling's not white then you might not want to do it but you throw this on it and yes the flash is still getting to the ceiling but a lot of it is getting diffused here so it's hitting this and then bouncing out and around which is why i can shoot like this because i'm close enough to my subject and this is basically going to send it up and bounce back some super soft and also bounce it out and around fairly soft as well so that's basically what I do on every wedding, is it's just my camera, my flash on here, and it's it. And if I need to do off camera, I can grab another one of these, because they talk to each other, throw it on a stand, and still have this one like this, and then just fire that off on the side somewhere. Yeah, 7,000, yeah. Especially, you know, I'm using two cameras, like. 7,000 kind of makes sense. It's like pretty much two to three on each camera. Throw a second photographer in there. And then, yeah, you're, you're getting up towards eight or something. I'm pretty sure I shot heavy on this wedding. So there's, there's the Fuji missing. Missing focus right there. That would have been an okay shot. It wouldn't have been like life changing. But you know, like if you're good with your focus, missing focus is not so bad because it's like, it happens. The points with, with weddings is that you wanna, you know, most of your shots, like 80, 85% of your shots need to be on. <laughs> seven thousand. <laughs> everyone's everyone's like, oh, seven thousand here. Let's let's look since everyone keeps asking. Let's see. Um, yeah, I came away with eight thousand photos. Let's see. So about two thousand of those were my second photographers. So technically, yeah, I took like seven thousand. All right, we're almost done calling. And then we can start getting into some of this good old editing. So this is out of focus, but I'm going to keep it anyway. I'm not going to keep these shots. So typically what I'll do is right before the couple starts eating, I get a shot of them kissing at their sweetheart table, but these candles were mad tall. You know what, I'll, I'll keep it. So because I shoot wide when everyone's dancing, it makes much better photos when there's more people on the dance floor. Because when there's not a lot, you can see that there's not a lot. And if y'all haven't seen it, the video that kind of explains how I'm shooting my receptions. Let me link that for you all. So this explains my approach to receptions, especially when everyone's dancing. Being in position, shooting through moments, having a lot of stuff to shoot. 7,000 makes sense, yep. Yeah, there's a lot going on, and you also wanna have alternates to photos too, like, there's a lot happening. Cause if you're just taking two or three photos, you're, you're missing stuff. 
you have backup photographer too? Because I'm a backup. Yeah. Um, I want to get more people like on call. I would love to have a bunch of on call photographers, but especially when I have a second. So there's my second there. You see her kind of poking in there. But, um, you know, she's kind of there on the day of. I count that as like a backup photographer too because I, for my second photographer, I like to bring on someone who I can trust. Like if for some reason I couldn't do the wedding the day of or something happens on, like at the day, I can just straight be like, yo, handle this because I know you got this. So, I've never used Photo Mechanic. Does it work inside of Lightroom? So it, it works along with Lightroom and I'm about to get to that point in just a moment. What I typically do is what I'm going through here is I'm five starring the photos that I want to keep. And once I'm done, I go back to Lightroom and I tell Lightroom because so Photo Mechanic is saving this stuff on the files themselves. So then I go to Lightroom and I say, hey, Lightroom, look at the metadata on the photos because it's changed now. It has all those five stars. So Lightroom goes in, looks at the metadata, sees the five stars. So it pulls that in and then now everything uh, that would have been hype. It's out of focus. Um, it pulls all that data in, and then it has all the five stars there. So at this point of the night, I think I let my second photographer go. Um, a lot of times, if I don't, you know, I they tend to get in the way for reception shots anyway. And I also don't want 50 different reception shots to have to, like, call through. So a lot of the times, like... If I know there's not much else going on for the night, I'm pretty much like dip early. Um, and then I still pay them for the full time that I was going to pay them for anyway, because, you know, I, I believe in paying people. I'm a big, big believer of paying people. I hate people who just be trying to concern themselves too much with the money and not enough with the people and the love of the people. So at this point of the night, it's reception. Photos are gonna start looking the same. There's a lot of the same stuff happening. So I'm gonna start calling a little bit faster. I start scrolling faster. And if it doesn't stand out to me enough for me to stop and look at it, then, you know, it's not getting cold. Cause it's just, it's a lot of just, you know, it's just a lot of the same at this point. Also, I have some of the shots from my second that work out. See, this this is why I love shooting wide. You see how you just like see so much happening and like, okay, yeah, they're not like the most perfect, beautiful photos, but you know, you see people in the back reacting to stuff that's happening and it's just fun. It's more fun like that. When you shoot close, you don't really see. It's like you're only really shooting the person that you're focusing on. Photo mechanic, what is your focusing technique? Looks like you don't have many out of focus. I'm just using single single shot focus and basically aiming and shooting it. I don't use continuous at all. Um, I don't trust it. So this is really just aiming it and shooting it. A lot of this is off the hip too. I'm not even looking. I'm just like, because for the most part, I dance while I'm taking the photos. So I'm like, I'm I'm in there, <laughs> you know? I'm just literally just ch -ch -ch -ch. Yeah, so a lot of this stuff, the second photographer has shots and stuff, so. I'm just scrolling through real fast at this point. <laughs> And then another thing about the way I call is I like to call fast too because I can always call down when I'm editing. Like I don't like to waste time calling. There's no point in sitting here and trying to make sure that I get like the perfect call. Like I count this as a first pass. 
And then when I start editing, if I'm going through and I'm like, oh man, there's like mad photos of this thing or there's too many photos of that, then just get rid of it, you know? But I like my first pass to be like as quick as possible. Trying to make myself use wide angles more, but I'm so scared of them. I usually shoot from afar with my telephoto. And honestly too, Jennifer, that's like a, it's a stylistic choice. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know, no offense to anyone who likes to stand on the outside. It's just, you know, different, different strokes for different folks, basically. Um, Cause yeah, some people like to be close up in there and all in the action, the other like to kind of stand back. Like these speech photos, these are all pretty far back. I'm using my 56, which is like an 85 at that point. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of like, you know, just standing back listening to the speech and stuff. But then when the dancing starts up again, I'm back on my 16 mil. This was with the 35, so every now and then I'll throw some 35 shots in there, but for the most part, I'm just on my 16, shooting that stuff. You do same day edits? I do not. <laughs> I'm thinking about doing some stuff like that, but I definitely can't turn around a wedding. Um, I could with my iPad, just like do a couple of quick photos and like deliver it to them. This may have been answered earlier, but why do you use Photo Mechanic for calling? Because it's much faster. It's pulling in the JPEG, like, previews. So I can scroll through like this and just be like, do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Lightroom has to, like, load the photos. Lightroom takes forever. Lightroom is the worst program ever. I only use it because I know it so well. And it's, like, the fastest, most reliable way to edit for me at the moment. Yeah, at this point, I have enough reception photos, so I'm just kind of flying through these and seeing if there's anything. Um, in a moment, we're gonna get to the cake cut. So obviously we need those photos. Couple group photos slip in there. taking photos of people taking selfies. I don't know why. But yeah, even going through this fast, like certain photos are gonna stand out to you. Like you're gonna see them. They're gonna they're gonna point out at you. You're gonna just notice them. And that's why I like to call like that, because it's easier just to be like, oh yeah, I see it. There it is. So there's the smile before the cut. And then now they cut. For this, I'm not really looking for anything special. Obviously just emotion, so I'll just kind of go through. And then they pull out the cake. So it's kind of like just, just a handful of photos from each different section of what's going on. There's the edited version that I did already. So you see, I got rid of this fire extinguisher. That's another thing too. Try to keep your scenes nice and clean. As much as you can, at least. Um, you see, like, I just brightened it up a little bit. Got the natural pre fills preset on there just to make it clean it up a little bit. So usually what I'll do is I'll just go around and take a couple photos of like all the couples there and stuff. I'll use a longer lens for that because obviously it's like, you know, slow dancing. I'm not going to, I'm not trying to get close to y'all while you're slow dancing. And then more partying. Partying. 
I also like the wide lens and how it like exaggerates everything too. So it really works out for receptions, I think. Everything just looks like wild and crazy and there's distortion everywhere and it's just really, it's really cool. Yeah, the, these are a lot of reception photos of this. I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I call it a whole bunch. Do you give all your photographs to your client or allow them to pick? I do not. I call them, I deliver them. Um, so I choose all the photos, basically. When you start letting the clients choose their photos it ends up becoming more of an ordeal than anything i understand a lot of people are like oh but it's my wedding day i want the photos da 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 um but the way i see a lot of things too is that you um it's kind of like when you go to a restaurant you know what i mean they don't give you the ingredients and then you cook it yourself no one wants to do that the reason you go to a restaurant is so that you can you know be served and have someone cook it a certain way and have it nice so it's the same difference with a photographer like you're their chef of photos basically you're giving them the best stuff and they should <laughs> they should trust you on that basically barely any guys showed up it's like every wedding they're like where are all the single guys and they're like mm. then we got bouquet toss I kind of pan over as she throws it so I can get both their reactions. So this would be with bouquet tosses and stuff. Having a second photographer helps because I could just have them aim at everyone. These are a little out of focus, but they're fine. I think that's the focus one. <laughs> uh, wrong camera, bro. That one works. Okay. We're pretty much done at this point. Would you ever shoot JPEG at a wedding and speed up the workflow? I've thought about it, especially with the Fujifilm cameras. Like, they, they look really good. I haven't yet. I just can't bring myself to do it, but I've, I've really thought about it. All right, so they weren't having a sparkler exit. They did confetti. So I actually organized everyone. And this is gonna be in the full wedding day. I didn't just let them come out and have everyone throw it. I literally directed everybody exactly what to do. And I counted them off because this would have been chaos. And unlike sparklers, sparklers last for a while. So you can kind of get the shot you need. This is like a one-time throw and it's done. So I counted everybody off. You see, and then they all threw it. That way I can get the photo I wanted. This is a little too much, the light. So I was using uh, this little thing. I usually use this, that sparkly exits. Just throw it in the hot shoe. And then turn it on. If it even still works right now, yeah. And then just point that at the couple. Um, it's a little cool, which kind of sucks, but it's nice to have this light. Cause yet again, I'm shooting most of the time I'm shooting pretty wide. A lot of recently I've been shooting closer or like with a telly, but it adds a nice little pop of light, but it doesn't um, mess up the lighting on the sparklers. Cause when you use flash, you kind of lose the mood of the sparklers. So I like to keep it as natural as I can. And 
then grandma came and blocked me. <laughs> so I tried to run in. So these are a little soft because that was me like running in being like, oh God, I need to get the photo. These all work. And then they go get in the car. I was, I didn't have a chance to switch to my wider lens. So that kind of threw me off too. And yeah, that's it. We called it. We did it. We called. And now let's go back to Lightroom. And then while everything is going on, I'm going to answer some questions. So basically what I do is I go into attribute and I want anything that's not edited and also not five stars. So rater is rating is less than or equal to four star. So anything that I've already five starred while I was doing like their preview and stuff won't show up here because what happens is if you read the metadata, you basically lose your edit. And I don't wanna do that because I can use those as edits for placements for the other photos in those areas. So now I select all, I go to metadata, go to read metadata from file. And it says you can't undo this. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. I actually should probably turn on the don't show again. Or you know what, maybe not, because if I mess up then cool. And then I hit read and then now it's gonna read all the X and P data and it's gonna apply those five stars to the photos. And while we're waiting on that, let's go ahead and answer some questions. What is your basic f-stop when dancing begins? Oh, we got South Africa in the house. Basically, I'm wide open. Um, I'm wide open all night, especially when the dancing, because at that point, it's dark. So may as well just be wide open. 35 mil is for beginner prime lens. You can do anything but it's hard to take a candid shot. You have to kind of know, I actually, I love prime lenses for candid shots. Um, so basically what I did before I really got into wedding photography to kind of practice, especially with primes, was do a lot of street photography. Because the one thing that I feel personally this is the same about street photography and wedding photography is you as a photographer have to anticipate the moment and you have to be a part of the moment. So yeah, you can use the zoom lens and stuff, but it's very different when like you're walking and you see and you see it about to happen and you're just there and you line it up and you go boom and you grab it. So it's the same thing with weddings. Um, obviously I'm not gonna get a candid of something across the room, but pretty much I'm in there and anything happening close to like the couple and stuff like that, I'm gonna get candidates of that stuff because I'm ready for it and I see it. So I don't, I don't think it's that hard to get good candidates with a prime. You just have to know stuff and be ready for it, basically. Shooting burst mode, yes. Burst, low, low shutter, low, high shutter. Yeah, Fuji's have two settings. They have continuous high and continuous low and then single. So continuous low is like five frames per second and continuous high is like 11. So usually continuous low. I don't know if this stream will be on when I get back. Thanks for hanging. I'm seeing lots of XT3 can do. Awesome. Thanks for hanging out, Jennifer. Hope you learned some stuff. Um, I'm probably, I don't know how long I'm gonna stream, but I'm definitely gonna keep going now because I'm like in the flow and I need to start editing anyway. So <laughs> sometimes backup photographers have better angles. Yep. The second photographer, that's, that's what I usually use my second for. Um, I keep them with me so like I don't do the whole sending the for second photographer to the groom and then I do the bride I don't do that I go to the groom and the bride and I bring the second with me so they get alternate angles of the stuff I'm already taking anyway which ends up getting more photos overall so are you ever coming to Cali I was in Cali like uh, last month or something for the evolve workshops which I can, I can link them down in here too. So I spoke at the Evolve workshops. It just happened. I think it was last month. I can't remember. Um, so that was in SF. Hopefully I get to come out to Cali again, but that's a pretty long trip, but I do want to come. It's nice. 
the lighting there is so different too i'm jealous the light is just like so good all the time for no reason hey the dude reggie's up in here just want to say keep doing what you're doing you're in my opinion most underrated fuji oh thank you <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> Thanks for the answers. Good night. Oh man, it's 12 in the morning. Have a good night, Jeffrey. Get some rest. Get some rest for a new day. Any advice for becoming a second? So that's actually cool. I just went to a, um, Matt, what's up? Welcome to the stream. I just went to a little meetup yesterday where someone was asking me about becoming a second. And the issue she was having was she had been an assistant a lot. So like a third photographer, but there's not a lot of shooting in that you also don't get a lot for your portfolio or anything so as a second i mean really just hit up as many people as you can eventually you're gonna get a photographer who may take you as a second or a third when you approach photographers to offer yourself as a second or a third um, because especially nowadays a lot of photographers when we're hiring seconds it's mainly someone who we can depend on and less of just like someone trying to learn um for me personally that's the same thing like i would hire a third photographer for someone who's looking just to learn um, because i won't be able to trust your photos and that's fine that's just where you are now so hit up as many photographers as you can that you actually like their stuff and make sure before you're hitting them up that you follow them and you know their work and you appreciate their work because the most annoying thing especially for a photographer who's more established is having all these people email them all the time like hey can i second hey can i second i want to take fun like no follow them like their photos um engage with them outside of hey i want something and so they'll remember you after a while and once you made that impression then be like hey you know, I really love your work. That last wedding you did was really awesome at whatever venue because you noticed their post. You know, let them know that you see them and then be like, I would love to second for you or even third um, and then go from there. So that's probably the best thing. I've also, I'm a huge fan of shooting. Oh, thank you for that sub Z channel, ZH channel. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of doing cheap weddings. So if you can find cheap weddings that are aesthetically still kind of nice, they're not like cheap all the way weddings, you know, do a, do a short three to five hour of coverage of a wedding for like 500 bucks. Um, it's a great way to kind of build your portfolio and then also not have it be as high stakes as doing a wedding by yourself. But you can also build some portfolio, which will lead to you getting better second photographer kind of gigs. So that would be my recommendation i actually i shot weddings for like about two years before i even started seconding which is not the best way to approach it um but that's what i did so then when i was seconding i had whole weddings so i was like i shot weddings by myself i can second for you so if you see here up to the top left it's reading the xmp data sometimes this takes a while so using Lightroom CC it says no preview available on my raw files wow that's weird is that oh is huh I thought all photos had previews on them they should that's weird one of my reasons why I switched to Fuji Kiko oh thank you <laughs> great advice I was just a third learned a lot yeah being a third is great um it's even better than being a second sometimes especially if you're learning because it's literally just like okay do the thing and you're like cool any advice for someone to do a cheap wedding um so i got my start using thumbtack and i'm half and half on that service i'm actually let me link my video that i talk about that but with that service you basically can find people who are looking for weddings and stuff and typically it's pretty cheap stuff but you do have to pay to get in there so you have to be careful because if you don't if you don't watch yourself you can spend more money than you're even booking stuff and it defeats the purpose but it's a it's a great way to actually go ahead and start and kind of move in from there random do you have a Spotify playlist for your background music? I do not. Um, most of this music is from the service called, uh, I'm brain farting, um, Epidemic Sound. 
Um, I need to add more songs to it because it loops like 50 times, but... <laughs> I know you said you used to do music as well. I don't know if you have any of this is yours. None of this is mine. Um, and I'm not going to play any of mine on here because I don't want YouTube to hunt me down. But <laughs> I do have some of my old music floating around on the internet. Facebook ads and Google ads and got nothing. Yeah, I found um, Instagram works best. Instagram ads or not even doing ads on Instagram. Like that stuff tends to be the best. Oh, I think the next the next live stream I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be editing y'all's photos with the natural fields preset. Um, so let me actually, what is that Dropbox? Let me get y'all a link to that so you can submit your photos. So you can submit submit your raw files there, um, and I'll be editing them on a live stream probably next month. I want to start getting into the habit of doing like one live stream a month type of thing, um, and just having that up here for y'all to check out and go back and rewatch and kind of see the process as I do it, as well as answer questions and stuff while I'm doing it as well. So drop your photos in there, and the next live stream I will be editing them. And just so y'all can see, let's actually look at some of the raw photos we already got. Is this gonna make it all the way widescreen? It is, I don't wanna. Ah. Can I, oh yeah, I can, nice, there we go. Um, so here are some photos that were submitted to me through the Dropbox. Topaz noise reduction. I use um, isotope stuff for my noise reduction. Oh, but we're talking about photos, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm thinking noise like sound. So Chico submitted these. These are beautiful too, I love this shot. Here's a cool reception shot. Here's another one, that backlight. This is all Chico, this is cool stuff here. Love it, love the down low angle. I shoot, I shoot a lot of these down low angles myself. Man, I got so many emails. Emails for days. Here's another cool shot. I love this, like them walking by. So here's Infinity, Infinity Media with some of their submissions. And I'm going to be editing. I might, if I have a time to do like a long live stream, I'll try my best to go through all the photos. ARW is what, Sony? So here's Lucas. He hit me up and was wondering what the natural fields preset would look like on his stuff. So sent some over. Gorgeous shots. I love this pose. Is this her other leg? How is she standing? How is her feet like? Nice. This is cool. This has a very like editorial kind of look to it. I like this a lot. And that's, that's all I've gotten so far. Oh no, why did it go back to the beginning? Here's some photos from Tom. This is cool, look at that nice fresh snow. Got a lot of Sony stuff in here. CR2 is a uh, Canon, right? There we go, we got some folks dropping some files in. Actually, I think they'll show up right now. So if y'all are or if y'all are watching the stream, yeah, this is gorgeous. Window light off to the left here, you can, you can see it coming in. This is good, I love this angle. 
so good. This hand placement is a little weird because it looks like he's trying to grab her, uh, her, her milk duds or her, her fun sacks. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you want to call them. Did those new photos come in? Who just dropped the photo? Someone dropped the photo just now. Let's see. Reload. It was saying 21 before. It's still saying 21. Huh. Off topic, Topaz just released a new AI machine learning software. All the sci-fi nerds are using the upscale Babylon 5, <laughs> Deep Space Nine, and Voyager Stargate. All the good shows. So while we're waiting for this to read the XMP data, I don't know if Lightroom can handle too much more at the same time. So for now, I'm just hitting these questions. If y'all have questions for me or anything of that sort, let me know. Let me know. And then we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of editing. This is done reading the XMP data. Also, if y'all don't know about the natural fields preset already, here's the link of it. Check it out. That's what I'm basically going to be using to edit all the photos going forward. One thing I definitely need to do is get my iPad set back up so that I can stream with the iPad. I, I still don't have that set up currently since I've changed my whole setup and using my Fuji as the main camera. Hello, great work. May I ask how you synchro photos of two different cameras? Um, basically at the start of the day, I just go into the camera settings of the camera and make sure the timings are as close as possible. Um, with this wedding, my second photographer's photos were actually off by a whole hour. So what I ended up having to do was select her photos and adjust that. There's a setting in Lightroom where you can just change the actual timing of the photos. So I pick a photo where me and her shot almost an identical shot and use that as my placement to place it on which timing and also find out how off her camera was. So. do any special any special aside from presets to your green and white colors they look so amazing not really honestly a lot of that I think is just the out of camera but honestly like a lot of photos look good like I could probably even grab one of these photos real quick um, and show y'all kind of what natural feels looks like on it oh yeah this was new there we go Francis just dropped that in here. You still in the chat, Francis? Because if you are, I'll, I'll edit this one real quick so you can see it. Just let me know. Give me a holler. Give me a, give me a, yeah. <laughs> can you explain what you're doing here with Lightroom again? Yeah, so um, earlier I used Photo Mechanic to call my photos. So with Photo Mechanic, I'm basically laying information onto the metadata of the photos. So I've added star ratings. And then now I went in and told Lightroom to look at all these photos and read the XMP metadata of those photos. And any photo that I five starred from Photo Mechanic, that information now is gonna be into Lightroom. So I'm just waiting for it to go through. Thank you for the sub, whoever that was. I think I heard a sub. Um, so I'm just waiting for it now to read the XMP data on all the pictures so that they're going to be five-starred and then I have only the photos that I'm going to edit on. So Francis isn't in the house. So let's see. Let's see if Lightroom can handle this. I'm going to go ahead and edit their photo real quick since they went ahead and submitted. Uh, let's see. Open, download. 
notice in the downloads. And let's go ahead and import. So the reason I don't five star in Lightroom is because Lightroom is mad slow. But I guess reading the XMP data, like, <laughs> is that just as slow? You just can't call as fast. Um, and usually when I read the XMP data, I go, like, have a coffee or take a break or something for two seconds. Or, like, answer emails or something while I'm waiting for that. So let's import. Let's see if we break. Or, you know what? I'm going to do the whole drag-in method. I'm just going to drag it in. All right, so I want to make a new folder. Um, I'm going to call it submissions. Oh, you know what? I take that back. I'm going to make a new folder in my hierarchy and call that submissions. Then inside of that folder, I'm going to make one called natural fills. Um, yeah, natural fills subs. I don't need to make a second copy. Cool. We good. So we're going to import that. So you're not calling direct from the cards, you've already, yeah, so I, I like to import everything so I can make backups and all that stuff, and then I call from the folders that I already have the photos in there. Do you make one Lightroom catalog for each job? I do not. Um, I know a lot of people who do that, but typically I just have one big Lightroom catalog. I like to split it between years. Um, last year I split it into quarters, so I did, or like half, so I did the first half of the year, the last half. Um, this year, I'm going to try and just do one big one again and kind of go from there. So it looks like Lightroom's holding it down while I'm actually reading the XMP data. So Francis is chilling in the chat. Let's go ahead and edit this so they can get a quick look at the natural fields preset. So what is this? This is good old Fuji. Looks like a RAF file. My good Fuji. Yep. XT3 is using an 85 mil F1.8. 85 so what's that like a hundred something can you make a video how you make instagram ads that would be a good video i should do some videos on some ad stuff so let's see this photo we're at one four hundredth of a second with a shutter f 1.8 iso 200 nice and clean look at that clean clean I love this this is so good um so we're gonna hop into develop so typically I level it out first to make sure it's straight and then for me and y'all know and people be hating but that's what it is I like my center focus so I'm gonna move her to the center here like that and I can crop out just a bit so there's our crop nice and straight center focus and then I'm going to throw my natural fills preset on it. Blam. And then yet again, the way the natural fills work is you want to go to your exposure first. And then after you exposed it the way you want, then you're going to want to work with your white balance. So for this, the tint is looking okay. It's actually a little high and I think it needs to be warmer. Or you know what? Maybe I want more tint. I'm a very tint. I like magenta. I'm a magenta guy. I'm gonna turn the clarity up a bit. I'm actually gonna underexpose it and lift the shadows on her just a tad. Cause she's already exposed pretty well. The colors are so different. What is this? What camera is this? What is an 85 mil? What lens is that? I'm so lost. <laughs> the colors look different than what I'm used to with normal Fuji stuff. Um, yeah, and that's it. I'm done with the edit. That's how I edit stuff, y'all. It's literally like boom, boom, bow. There it is. Edit done. Uh, 
don't know. Yeah, I like it there. I have one big catalog, but Lightroom gets so slow and clunky. Yeah, that's, I'm gonna try it. So I have my catalogs right now on M.2 drives. So I'm hoping that makes it a little bit faster, but all my raw files are on a normal, like 7,200 RPM hard drive. So I don't know like what happens there. Using Viltrox 85, that's what it is. This thing looks good. It makes the colors look different than they normally do on a Fuji camera. Oh, so here's something. I'm not like extra picky about this stuff, but she has a little bit of some stuff going on here in her face. So usually I just like use a quick heel to plop some of that out real quick. Clean up the face just a little bit. And I mean, you can't, you can barely see that in the photo. Um, so here's the before and after. And yeah, so yet again with the natural fills preset, if y'all know it or have never seen it, um, like it, it enhances the colors, but it definitely doesn't, it's not going to make your photo look like crazy different. And it really kind of takes the approach to what I do with weddings. I like to keep everything natural and looking pretty standard to how it really looked, just with a little bit more oomph to it. So that's what the natural fills preset is going to do for you. It's gonna take your photo, add some oomph to it, and make it so that you can edit quick. Cause yet again, I'm a wedding photographer. So, you know, I'm editing like 800 to 1000 photos and I need to do it fast. I'm not gonna sit here and go, oh, let me nitpick every photo. That, no, I'm gonna be like, edit one from a scene, copy that setting, paste it on the rest from the scene, make sure they look fine, go, 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 go. Which is why I was saying earlier, I can do a whole wedding in like eight hours on a good day when I'm like, in the zone and I can sit down. Good teaser for the photo submission edit video. Yeah, that's, that's basically what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go through all the photos and do it. Um, so I did a, I did this in my last live stream, but my export workflow basically is I export and I'm just gonna put this, let's see. We'll go to 2020, we'll make a folder called other. And then in it, we'll just do natural fields, subs. I don't need to rename. I'm gonna export this at full quality. So this is how I actually deliver photos. We don't resize it, resolution's 300. Sharpen for screen, low. And then I open it in alien skin, exposure four, or I think they dropped the alien skin now, they're just exposure. But it opens in exposure afterwards, so. Hit export. <laughs> Thanks, Francis. I'm glad you liked it. Well, here's the last little section. So this is separate from the natural fills preset. This is what I do myself. Um, but you can, the natural fills preset, it has grain added to it. So if it's grainy to you and you don't like it, you can just get rid of that in Lightroom. And the sharpening is also inside of Lightroom. But the difference from the natural fill preset versus what I do is I sharpen within alien skin, but it's basically the same. The sharpening is just a little bit different. It's a little bit nicer and easier to me in exposure, but natural fills is like a quicker way to do it so you don't have to export and then also like do what I'm doing. Like I double export basically. I have to export, apply my sharpening and grain and then export again. So here's the photo straight out of Lightroom with screen sharpening and that's about it. And then I have a preset for sharpening and grain. And you can see, let's do it while we're zoomed in. You can kind of see what it adds there. So there's the sharpening and grain added. I don't know if y'all can see that over the stream because it might be hard, but here's the before, here's the after. So it just makes it a lot more crispy, adds a little bit of grain on it. And then that would be the finished product there. Yeah, that's a gorgeous shot. That dress is so awesome. You got the doors nice and open. Yeah, and that bokeh is, ah. Look at, look at that, ugh. See, here's my added grain. Y'all can see it now and I'm so close to it. This is without it, this is with it. So I like the graininess. Some people don't. I like to give my photos a little bit of a film look to them, so. 
then after that I hit save and then like I said it's a second export with one photo it's fine when you have like 15 20 30 photos it takes a little bit I like magenta but my friend hates it yeah I'm a very magenta like if a scene is too green I'm usually jacking up the magenta I don't like I don't know why I don't like green like this works because you have the browns of the door kind of like setting it apart with like the warmth but when stuff gets too green I don't it just looks I don't know it just like doesn't work for me I can't do it so Lightroom is still reading this XMP data so while that's happening I can go to attribute I can five star and we want stuff that is rated greater than or equal to five stars and you can see here now it's still pulling in the photos it's up to about 780 photos so far and it's about a quarter of the way has to go to be finished and you'll see because I did it the way I did the photos that I've already edited are still in there so that was for the like their little preview um, so you can see here these are the edited photos that I've done already is this really edited this don't look edited Thank you for the sub. This ain't edited. Why is this thing telling me this is edited? But see, this is, I'm pretty sure this is my second photographer, yeah. So I can just like, select, sync settings. Make sure everything I want is synced, sync, blam. There it is, it's done. There's my Brenizer. This ain't edited. This thing hating. Here goes those, um, someone was asking earlier about event photos. So here's a good look at the before and after of my on-camera flash method. Yet again, the flash is hitting them mainly. So I just add a little bit of noise reduction, just a little bit and up the exposure. And usually like it looks fine. As long as you're getting stuff lit pretty well in camera, like you're good to go. I always love taking the nice kind of vertical portrait shots. Do you prefer compressed or uncompressed? I usually use compressed raw. It just, it, it gives me more space on the camera. I don't see a difference in the photos. And I mean, it's a big difference. I go from having, so I use 128 gig cards and with compressed raw, I'm getting like 4,000 photos on each camera that I can take. Whereas if it was non-compressed, then you're gonna get like maybe 2,000 if even. Those uncompressed files are huge. And like, I don't think you're losing much of anything with the compressed, so it's it's whatever. You brand your second photographer uses. Do you can what? Yeah, so so basically, my second photographer when they take photos, they're basically copyright for me, so I can use those photos. Um, but I also let my second photographers use their photos, so they can use them in their own portfolios but they have to wait for me to deliver the photos to the couple and they also can't like tag the couple or anything like that. They can't submit it to blogs and things like that. Um, that stuff is just for me. But yeah, I use their photos like, um, out of those three photos, like this one here, this was my second photographer. You can kind of tell because of the angle. Um, these two right here. These were my second photographer. And this is what I was talking about earlier, that composite shot, this is the part I pulled from hers. This glare that she added, I pulled that from her photo and added it to mine. And then this was the original of mine. You use an iPad, right? How do you get around the compressed raw? So on the iPad, the iPad doesn't see the compressed raw. Like it doesn't know what it is. Um, so you can still use compressed raw, but it's weird because 
if you want to like preview what you're going to add to your camera before you add it you can't or what you're going to add to the ipad so you go to import and it's just like image files that you can't see what they are so that's kind of annoying if you want to be like let me just pull in like three or four photos um but with the narbox this this little boy here with the narbox you can use the apps that it uses on the ipad and you can call the photos down that way and use this to pull in photos so that's really cool if y'all didn't check out my um narbox video either i'm about to link that because the narbox has changed my life i love this thing so much so so much uh here it is Bloop. so yeah narbox is basically like a little computer it has its own little battery hooked up to it which maybe one day i'll get another battery at some point oh this thing i'm the worst i can't get it out oh well i'm gonna leave it in there <laughs> But yeah, it's cool. And it, it basically acts as a computer. It backs up your stuff. It has an SD card slot on it. So you can just back up directly. Or one thing I found recently, which maybe I can show y'all real quick while I wait on this XMP data. It has um, micro HDMI out. So I have my iPad here. I got this thing on me like all the time. Boy, got that thing on him. No, <laughs> so I can hold it. I'm gonna turn it on. And it acts like a little computer. You can see it's kind of on there. And once it turns on, I'm gonna connect my iPad to its Wi-Fi. I have a little monitor over here that I use like for a reference monitor when I'm uh, making YouTube videos. So let me grab my monitor. So I got my little reference monitor. God, I hate black shirts. Oh no. So plug this thing in. And then on my iPad, I can connect to the Wi-Fi of the Narbot. Hook this thing up with micro HDMI, which luckily the Fuji cameras already have. So I have micro HDMI to HDMI. Go to the Safe Keep app, which is an app that controls your Narbox. Uncompressed is good for very photo. Oh yeah, you get more range on your photos, I'm sure. And now that I'm in here, so I can look at all the content that I've downloaded onto my Narbox. And I know y'all can't really see it, but what you can see is now that it's hooked up, it basically is like, cool, I'm ready to display whatever. And so I can go through now and look at some of the footage I got from that wedding. Let's see if I can find something. And then I can have it play through the HDMI. And then you can just watch it that way off of the Narbox directly, which is kind of cool. This was me grabbing like the five seconds of detail photos while everyone comes into the room. You can actually like, you can actually see everyone coming into the room and me rushing around like, oh God, I gotta get the photos. I gotta get it. It was the worst. It was the worst. So yeah, this is gonna be some of the footage I'm gonna use for um, my full wedding day video. I got a lot of footage, so it's gonna be cool. It should be cool stuff. Let me close this out now. And we'll turn off this NAR box. Lightroom is just about done. 
which device are you using for live stream? I mean, camera. That's my, uh, I'm actually using my X-T3. So it gets me that, that good looking, that good look. Oh yeah, see, it's gotten darker. That's why I have my little LED lights on, because I knew the, the lighting, oh, here it comes. I hate these days where the clouds are like in and out, and you're just like, bro, can I, can I just get some solid lighting? Does it have to be changing like every five seconds? <laughs> Right, so close to that XMP data, so close. Okay, so for everyone who was asking earlier about how many photos I take and then how many I get and the couple gets, so here's a great, great representation of that for you. Um, I took in total between me and a second photographer, we have 8,000 photos. And it looks like I'm going to come away with about 1,050-ish, 1,060, somewhere in there. Um, I'm going to be culling that down while I go because I usually cull heavy at first and I can just make any changes I need to afterwards. But for the most part, yeah, it's about 1,060 photos. Have you ever had any scam artists trying to scam you on the night or wedding wire? <laughs> I, I've seen a lot of scams, um, but they're pretty obvious. And they're always, I, they, need to, they need to up their game. They always come through, oh, I have a family reunion that I need someone to shoot for three hours like next Tuesday. Come on, bro. No. Like, it's, it's obviously spam. So now let's separate our photos a little bit. Create collection set. Oh, nope, not a smart set. We want a collection set. We're going to call it weddings. We're going to do another collection set. And this will be titled for the couple. So Michaela and Markel. Oops. So we create that. And then within that, we create a smart collection. We'll call it flagged photos. Can you give a tutorial about live streaming with the XT3? Yeah, I'll maybe I'll make a video about it. It's it's pretty straightforward. Um, the rating is five stars. The source folder contains all. It says Michaela. Spell that right. Yeah. And Markel. And that's all I need. So create bloom. So now I have a smart folder that shows me all my flag folders here chilling. I got a thousand or 1063 to be exact. This is the whole day all timed out. Everything's nice and there and ready. And then what I generally do is I separate everything into sections. Um, I tend to do this on every live stream. I don't think I'm going to break down every section right now. Um, I'm just going to break down a couple of the sections and start editing so y'all can watch me edit and we'll kind of go from there. Um, so let's, we select, basically what I go through is I name areas. So I put a label text. So this is details. This is getting ready groom. Oops. So I make smart collections for each of those sections. So details, you add label text is details. So there's my detail section. I also, oops, this is getting ready groom. And I like to separate my photos like this so that I can have peace of mind while I edit. So rather than me feeling like, oh my God, I have a thousand photos to edit, I can just focus on specific sections of the wedding and then say, oh, I only have like 70 photos to edit. I only got 50 photos to edit. And then that way, when I finish a section, I can get that small win, get that little dopamine and be like, yeah, finish that section on to the next one and go on from there. So this is all getting ready bride. 
Also too, once I set up these sections, when I get some more photos that need to be in those sections, all I have to do is name it. So see, I'm gonna call that one out. I just like the other one better. But yeah, all I have to do is name it and it's gonna end up in the section. So like right now I have 25 photos or four photos for getting ready groom, but I'm gonna go through, select all these because this is all getting ready groom. name it getting ready groom and then boom so now I have 61 photos and that smart album and now I'm ready to edit because it's it's there I got everything I need and see yet again I can call this stuff that call that down this one has a better spray on it so I'm gonna get rid of this one I like his arm up on this one so I'm gonna get rid of that one and that's usually what I do I don't come through and decall my photos first but while I'm looking at it, it's pretty obvious the stuff that I do and don't want. Because I don't need like 50 of the same photos. So. so these are my second photographer. So after that, I'm gonna start separating things by metadata. So let's look at what the second has and then I'll do those only. A lot of times my second photographer's photos are just black and white depending like, yeah, the white balance is all wrong here and stuff. So. That's gonna be a cool little black and white. Highlights down some, cause it's a little overexposed on his shirt. Exposure up and we're pretty much good to go. Um, get rid of that photo. This also, I'll black and white it. Bring the highlights down a bit, exposure up a tad. Um, I'm good without this one. Bring the shadows up a little on this one. Ah, someone put their cup down there. I might be able to Photoshop. That's not too bad. Oh, we got people dropping, dropping files in the Dropbox. So this is natural fills again. So yet again, everything's a little green. So add some magenta and some little cool. So warm it up a tad and then that's pretty much good to go. And then yeah, the rest of these photos are from the same scene. So you select them all and then you sync the settings. You do amazing work. How can I get your presets to buy? They are on line you can check them out there here is a link so after i sync my settings basically again i'm gonna go through and make sure it looks fine so like this one's a little bit overexposed so drop the exposure a bit check out this one it's a little cool just barely though So there's all my second photographer's photos looking good. Bring exposure up on this just a little bit. Then I go to my photos. Looks like I have about 49. And then basically I can start from the top. Crop this in a bit. Set exposure magenta because it's a little greeny, and a little bit of warmth. Probably turn up the clarity a little bit, and then what I should be able to do. I should be able to copy that across most of these. The white balance is a little all over the place and that's yet again the downside to shooting in 
auto white balance because like it changes so often and then you can't just sync the settings but for the most part it should be pretty general yeah so this was the 23 these 35 ones are too cool so i'm gonna go back now and just warm up the ones that need to be warmed up and then i'll sync that across everything else Change this crop a little bit. And then, yeah, I should be able to, yeah, so that's looking about right there. And then now I will sync that across the rest of the photos. Do you call your second photographer's pictures too and get them to send you? No, I have them, um, I have them, so I download all their photos on the Narbox like the day of the wedding. So I take all their stuff and I have it, and then I call their photos and I edit the photos. So pretty much they just show up, shoot, and then give me the photos and that's it. And then I pay them. Pretty good gig. Being a second photographer is good money, y'all. If you're like too scared to do weddings yourself, but would love to like be at least around weddings, be a second photographer, it's a, it's a good gig. If you find a nice photographer too, who's like treats you well and pays well, it is a good gig. Like my second photographer for this wedding, she made 500 bucks, which, you know, for not even eight hours, cause I let her leave early. So you're talking for like maybe a seven hour day making 500 bucks ain't bad. You know, show me a part-time job where you're making 500 bucks in eight hours. Now that I've done that, I can kind of look at everything and make sure it looks fine. This one's a little too warm. Sometimes too, what I'll do is I'll just edit by lens. So yeah, see like I pretty much doubled up on that. So I'm gonna mute that and get rid of this one too. Too much of the same. Dang, I strained my back at the gym, y'all. I don't know what I did. I can't even sit right. So one big thing I kind of did for these shots is you can kind of see it so this is the lamp here on the left right now is like a new viewer of the photo you may not even really notice that or just be kind of like whatever but um that's the lamp and i put the phone on the floor too so like this table is now clean it doesn't have like a bunch of mess on it so you always want to notice and point out stuff like that oh you know what i have this one already i should have just synced that one up Yeah, I can pretty much sync it across the board and then for the ones that are a little different, I can go through and change those up. Mm, that white balance. <laughs> I'm just going through quickly and I'm usually like quickly going between the levels and then the white balance and the exposure because those are the big things those are the things that are going to change the most and 
and I like I like my photos to be straight. I don't like too much Dutch tilt going on. I'm gonna just black and white this one. Sometimes Lightroom has no idea what it's doing with lining up the stuff, so I have to do it myself. Let's see, about prints, do you get a percentage of the money for the prints they order off your site? Also, if there are issues, do you take up? Yeah, so, um, when I do prints, I do get a portion of that money. Basically, the prints are much cheaper than they actually are to buy. So the only thing I have to pay for is the production cost of the print itself. So that difference between the production cost and then how much I'm, how much they're paying for the rest of the print is what I get. And usually it's not a lot. I don't like to like write up my prints so much that they're ridiculous. So, you know, it's not a lot, but technically prints are passive income so it's a cool way to make some extra money and also serve your clients without being like shady basically sync settings what's your update of your collab with reggie <laughs> oh actually reggie i was shouting you out earlier i shouted out your brenizer photo video Cause I was uh, showing, I did a Brenizer at this wedding, so I had to shout out your video because it's so good. Hopefully, I'm gonna be recording my video this week, not this week, next week. Yeah, next week. We were on that that same timeline, basically. <laughs> Awesome. Let's black and white this one. Cropping on it too. I don't know why I shot it so so far back like that. Yeah. <laughs> the big shout out to Ryan Brenizer himself. The man with the dream, the idea. I wish I could come up some with some something cool like that. <laughs> and just for anyone else in here chilling, like editing shouldn't take you that long. It really shouldn't. And especially if you're looking to be a wedding photographer, like you shouldn't be sitting around for like too long on photos. Outside of like your one or two like banger shots that you're like, yeah, you know, this is gonna be on their mantle. But for the most part, you should be able to go through Lightroom pretty quickly. Cause if not, you're just wasting a lot of your own time. And if you wanna be able to shoot more weddings, it's like, you're kind of holding yourself back by taking so long all the time. So see, I like the way that looked. And now I'm gonna sync the settings across these photos. I think it can work on all of them. I don't know about these ones at the bottom there, but we'll see what happens. okay on some of them yeah, it's a little it's a little warm
take notes on all of the lighting. It's exactly the same. Yep. That's like, I should have shot this in Kelvin that I wouldn't be over here like dealing with 50 years of white balance. But that's another story. <laughs> Rich Kid and Tone for the preset. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's the that's the biggest thing is like pick your scene and keep it looking general. Keep the lighting looking nice. Know how you want to light it and then keep it looking that way. And you will be able to fly through your edits. that's basically how I'm able to just straight up come in here and sync the settings and be fine with it because the lighting is basically the same. Cool. So those are generally the same now. Yep. Those are looking good. So a lot of times my close up shots, I use them as my black and white shots. These will be color just because of what they are. But yet again, yeah, you see with the preset, if you got it right in camera and the white balance looked good, I'm literally applying the preset, turning up exposure, and that's it. Not much else involved. See, so this one, the white balance isn't where I want it. It's a little too green. Yet again, I'm a magenta guy, so I'm gonna throw a little bit more magenta in there and pretty much it's good to go and then I can select the rest of the photos and sync those settings actually that needs to be warmed up so yeah and then once I sync those settings across all the photos then I go through the rest of them and just make sure they look okay so like this is all the way off so I'm just gonna go back to as shot and so I can start from there Also saves me a little bit of time because then I don't have to deal with white balance uh, this one I'm gonna do color and black and white so let's go back to as shot on the white balance exposure down so we can see that spritz actually yeah, the white balance looks good as is for the most part then I'm going to create a virtual copy and then make a black and white. And I'll do that, I don't do that for all of my black and white photos, but some photos I think will work good. It, like they look okay in color, but I think they'll look better as a black and white, so I'll just do both. Um, and then, yeah, like I was saying with the small wins, I've just now finished this whole section of the groom photos. So now I just take a quick look at it and make sure it's fine. And at this point is when I would basically export it because it's, it's good, it's ready to go. All the photos are edited. Sometimes if I wanna make sure, I'll go to attribute and see if there's none that are edited, they're not. So that's all of his photos of him getting ready and then just do it nice and quick. So now let's go back through the sections. This is getting ready bright, I already tagged it. Here's him. Um, this is me, I've been tagging these with just John. And then I'll zero star that that's just some um, some stuff I can use for myself for promotional stuff anything cool like that <laughs> I love that you're loving the songs um, so this goes back to bride getting ready all this stuff here oh there's more groom getting ready cool so this is bride oh no getting ready bride getting ready bride 
us a little bit more getting ready groom. More getting ready bride. More getting ready groom. Cool. So now getting ready groom is complete. So what I have to do now is go back to the photos that aren't edited. So I can quickly hit metadata, or not metadata, I'm sorry, go to attribute and then no edits. And it'll show me only the photos that aren't edited yet. Would you say your black and white are better with Fuji over Canon? And I got my Fuji to black and white. There's something about the green on the Fuji files that just look better like that's why i don't even mind shooting at a kind of higher iso sometimes because it just looks good um so these were these were all the same so i'm gonna sync that and then i'll black and white this one I've noticed my 35 tends to be way cooler than the 23. This is the 16, 2.8, because I wanted to get a wide shot where you can see everybody. Again, I can sync this across all these photos. Oops, not metadata. Sync settings. What I do? all look good and then these last two so I'm gonna black and white this one And then this is when I would actually export everything. Um, so I'm going to take me a two second bathroom break <laughs> and I will be right back. So y'all sit tight. We're going to hit the bridesmaids or just the brides getting ready photos next. We'll edit a lot of that stuff. So give me two seconds. I will be right back.
All right. We back in here. We got snacks. We got snacks. We use the bathroom. We feeling good. I got these Chinese snacks. My my wife is half Chinese, so we be in there. So I hope y'all don't mind some uh, <laughs> what is it ASMR? <laughs> All right. marked most of this why the shots so off yeah her camera wasn't synced with mine at all so I usually call these group portraits and then again we'll make our smart album group portraits section for that. First look and couple portraits. Bam. And now because our photos are off, we're back to bride getting ready. So this is more getting ready bride. So this is first look. Oh, I'm so mad that it, I had already fixed the timing on the photos. So for anyone beforehand who was talking about what you meant by syncing cameras, this is what I mean. You see how like this should all just be one section of her getting ready, but then it's like, boom, a random picture of them together. It's just like, and it's annoying now because I can't just like go through it. It, just, it throws everything like all the way off. Luckily, I separate my stuff into sections like this, so it kind of helps out a little bit. I might have to go through and try and resync her photos up again. Let's let's go ahead and resync her photos up. All right, so because yeah, it's only 149 photos, but it's mad annoying, so we may as well get them the right spot so so this photo of him putting on his jacket for her was at 1244 and then we need to find when mine was of him putting on his jacket and I don't have all the same shots here I didn't call them out but like this is at 
143. So yeah, her should be one something. Let's actually go back to all the raw photos. Cause yeah, I have the pictures of him putting on the jacket as well, like this. That was at 143.10. 143.10. Yeah, so let's go through now. So we're gonna select only her camera. We're gonna select everything. I don't do this very often. Yeah, edit capture time. And then we want this one to be at one. Thank you, Tim, for that sub. What was it? 143.10. And it'll change all the photos. And now that that's done, they should be in a better sync time. So now it becomes like one nice cohesive story. Yeah, so see like, this is my shot, this is hers. They're basically on now, they're the same section. And now I don't have to worry about like, pictures that are like totally in like some random area or something that just don't make sense whatsoever. Mm. Dehydrated apple, so good. I never knew we could change capture time. Yeah, it's it makes the biggest difference. Cause now you see, now it's just her getting ready and it's one big section. So now instead of me like having to deal with all that as I can select the first one, I can go down, select the last one call all of it getting ready bride and there it is and so now it's not like a big issue since we're here I'll go ahead and do this real quick too now see it's still a little off but it's way better than it was so all the way down to here, except for this one, is group portraits. And I'll just make this part a couple portraits. Oh, it is already, okay, cool. So yeah, let's go back to bride getting ready photos. So here are all the photos of the bride getting ready. And since I already edited some of these for a preview, I can just use those as a place setting. So first let's see. So I only got 12 photos from my second and I may not even need all of them either. Like it seems like a lot. And it's a lot of like the same kind of stuff too. And so usually as you see, like I like to get the second photographer's photos kind of out of the way. So the angle on this one is all wonky. Ah, that's better. Crop it in some. again what we were talking about so when she gets hot she get those little like hive places and she said she was okay with me editing that out so I'm gonna heel tool that stuff so you can't really see it as much 
and that's another thing like obviously you can't do frequency separation in Lightroom but there's a lot of stuff that you can do so you know don't don't count Lightroom out a lot of people think that they have to do so many things in Photoshop and you really don't Lightroom was made really for speed I feel like so that you can really get in there and quickly make the changes you need to and also quickly do stuff like healing and dodging and stuff and the only time you need to do more than that is when it's like complicated stuff then you'll need Photoshop but for the most part anything like easy quick and simple Lightroom can do it you shouldn't have to be jumping between Lightroom and Photoshop often So I just synced a bunch of photos to see how they look. because like you can't really see her face but I love how it's just like a little little bit of the face in there she's off to the corner so I'm actually not going to center this up like I typically do I like her off to the side like that in this photo and then we're going to go through and heal it up real quick also the black and white makes it a little bit easier for me to edit out these splotchy marks because you can barely see it in the first place anyway on the black and white so yeah there's your before and after that but you can see oops tool really kind of got rid of that discoloration and stuff and yet again it's not like perfect frequency separation photoshop craziness but it it looks good to me you know you have to pick your like pick your editing style I feel like based a lot on the type of photography you're doing too because if it's portraiture like magazine photos or something like that it makes way more sense to like dive into the photo real hard I actually yeah I don't like this other photo I, I like the color version this is about to be another one of those photos where I make both. Create virtual copy. And then just black and white it. because I have some of my own of these photos cool so there's all my second photographers photos so we have those done and out of the way and now we get into the meat and potato of my own photos mmm Mmm, showing down. <laughs> um, I'm gonna come back to the flat lays in a moment. I just don't feel like doing them right now. Let's 
to see what we can do with this dress shot. Yet again, my video about dress shots, this is exactly what I don't like to do, is put it in front of a window. Luckily, it's a little bit of ways away from the window, so it's not so bad. But I just, I don't, I don't like doing it. I feel like everyone does it and it doesn't make sense because the dress is white and unless you're using a flash you're gonna blow out the background and you're not gonna be able to see the dress and it's like why are we why are we doing this like why so many emails please stop please make it stop what auto looks like yeah nah. that works I could do that and then I'll probably I'm not gonna do it now but Photoshop out this door because it's such an eyesore and I should hopefully be able to sync those settings across we'll see how that looks not too bad those last two with the white balance is kind of off but the rest of them aren't too bad. So I did a little bit of horizontal moving there. Try and get that X a little bit more like centered up. I thought it was kind of cool that they had the X there because it's the proximity hotel, so the X. Yep, and these all work, but then this one's like a little too blue or something. Yeah. Greetings from the Netherlands. What's up? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, so blue. also I kind of want to dehaze it really are all going to be the same. So let's do this real quick. This is the 16 mil 2.8. white balance is all over the place I want more magenta and it needs to be warmed up yo Lightroom I don't recently it hasn't been loading the images so like this looks like I missed the focus but I know I didn't and I kind of hate that Lightroom is doing that but whatever so we sync those settings because this is all the same scene your exposure looks right level stuff out It's okay. It wasn't like the greatest, but I just thought it was funny. They're over there, like looking at the photos. That was the mom's way of like trying not to get in her feels either. So it worked out. So I noticed you do not show feet. You usually cut off below the knees. Thoughts on that? Um, 
I don't know. I don't have too many thoughts on that. Half the time, I just don't really feel like it fits the scene. Like, we really need to see the feet. I don't think, like, it's a must-have. Um, I feel like faces are a little bit more important in the photos. These are basically the same. So no feet in there to me is like whatever. Um, so usually if I am showing feet, it's because I'm shooting like super wide. But for the most part, I'm just not, I'm just not bothering to care about the feet at all. Y'all ever, y'all ever had these little pandas? These things are so good. Little, they're like little animal crackers almost. But they got a little sauce inside. I know anyone. Anyone Asian, especially Chinese, y'all probably know these. These are my, these are my dudes. Mm. Also, too, without always showing the feet, it's a little bit easier to control your scene. Like, if you have mess in the scene that you don't really want there, it's easier to not have it there at all because there's just you can just put stuff on the floor and stuff yeah so we're just gonna heal out those splotchy spots and luckily there's not a lot of it after this when we do the first look at stuff outside it was actually a little bit cold so And you can you can barely even see it. Let me go back and check some of the other photos real quick. Yeah, you can't even see it. It's like a nervous habit habit thing. Ever do boudoir? I do not. My wife's not really down with me shooting boudoir either, so yeah, no. <laughs> I, I don't really do it. And I know a lot of photographers talk about you can make extra money doing that as well as a part of your package, but I, uh, it's just, it's too much for me. Too much. I'll let the ladies handle that. Best thing about China is orange chicken. Orange chicken. Our, our splotchiness again so we're just gonna heal that out these are about the same um See, I'm a black and white this one. There's our splotchiness again, so we're just gonna take care of that real quick. And yeah, yet again, like I was saying again, Lightroom is, it's efficient, it can do it. You don't always have to jump into Photoshop. I know there's a lot of photographers who like talk about that and obviously it depends on like the style and approach but i do also think that's a very like editorial magazine kind of approach to your photos so that heel didn't work so well so we need to pick a different spot for that So you see like those three photos were basically the same but i like to deliver like a couple different looks of like whatever facial expressions they're making so that they have kind of more to choose from how many times during a wedding do you hear women say trim off 30 pounds <laughs> luckily not that many um and i'm very transparent and upfront with my couples about how I edit, and I basically tell people that I don't I don't do that. Um, and I may take, you know, I may do it on one or two photos, but I'm gonna charge you for that. So 
between that, I don't really hear a lot of it. I mean, there's obviously, there's like moms or aunts or somebody. There's always somebody. You do hear it a lot. They're like, <laughs> just take off. You just take off like 50 pounds. <laughs> and you're like, bro, actually, it's not that easy. Like, there's the whole people whose jobs are retouching. That's what they do. It's not that easy. Like, yeah, I can take 50 pounds off of you. But that's like literally spending like four to five hours on one photo. Can't do it, bro. <laughs> I see a lot of photogs do a lot of dodging and burning for depth. And even had some comment to me like, you should do dodging and burning but don't always uh, I don't know I think he can make a cool photo um like in Reggie's video on how he does a Brenizer he kind of like he doesn't really dodge I mean technically that is kind of dodging and burning but he like molds the light around using post-production and it looks pretty cool so I definitely have nothing against it um I just like to get stuff looking good in camera and I also like to keep things looking pretty natural so it's like one-off photos. Like I'm not gonna do it very often. For the most part, I'm gonna keep things looking very true to life and very natural because that's kind of my approach. And yet again, this is wedding photography. Um, I want it to be about the day and having a good time on the day and remembering what your day was like rather than having these super epic photos. And yet again, that's gonna be different for photographers. Some photographers take like super epic photos and that's all you ever see and that's cool. Um, and then so their approach to editing and all that stuff is going to be different. So um, I have nothing against it. And that's like, again, with the um, the photo I did. Let me see if I can find it again. Of them on the rooftop. Like that just happened. That had to happen for this photo. Like I did a lot of Photoshop work on it. But I'm not going to do that that often. It's literally going to be like one or two photos. So it's the same thing with dodging and burning. Like your portrait section is going to be those photos that are going to have banger shots that are going to like be all extra and super edited and stuff. But there should literally be like maybe 10 out of your whole collection. And the bigger focus on wedding photography should be the wedding, the event and all that stuff. But yet again, it's a, it's a per photographer kind of approach you just kind of have to pick you got to pick what kind of photographer you want to be really and then what clients and then that's how you get booked with those people when your verbiage is very clear and they understand what you are and who you are and how you approach it and if that's what they want and they like your brand then they will book with you and it kind of works that way popped out for a few minutes did john answer the question i noticed you show feet oh yeah i did answer it i was just saying um i only really show feet when it's like wide shots i don't really think they necessarily always have to be in there and be shown um so yeah unless i'm shooting super wide i just don't bother i was also saying too not shooting all the way wide and down low like that makes it easier to hide stuff that might be on the floor or something of that sort do you care if your second shooter uses another brand? I do not. I could care less. And it's kind of funny, too, because I feel like everyone's so picky about that. And then I'm over here like, yeah, I shoot Fujifilm. So I already know in my area, there ain't no one else who shoots Fujifilm. Like, my second shoots Fuji. But that's because we also work for the same other photographer, and we're all Fuji photographers. So she just happened to move into the same area as me. And so that's cool because now I have another Fuji second. But like, especially shooting Fuji, I can't even be mad that I don't have seconds who shoot my same camera system because who shoots Fuji for wedding? You know what I mean? Like, there's such a little amount of us that I'm just kind of like, okay, whatever. Yeah, I shoot Fuji. How you feel about that? Usually people are like, woo, Fuji. <laughs> <laughs> okay hold up what's happening here this one is edited so let's use it as our base let's just hit all these photos real quick sync the settings 
and then we'll go back and check them. These things are good, man. This is like y'all are y'all are now seeing the full experience. This is how I edit. <laughs> I'm just like sitting around snacking. Listening to some cool jams. That's this literally literally my editing time. <laughs> So like me taking out this splotchiness is definitely eating up a lot of time but it's pretty noticeable and then yet again she said she would like it edited out so I don't mind jumping in here and making sure for the most part it's gone and like I said again it really doesn't take that much effort you see I'm just throwing some healing spots on it and then it's pretty much gone so like now if it was like a whole ordeal to edit it out then i may have only done like one or two photos and then the rest they'll just kind of have to deal with it but this is pretty easy standard stuff so but it's still kind of cute so I'm gonna leave it so you see her arm started calming down a little bit here so and I didn't even really notice it in the last couple of photos yeah you can't even really see it I guess I can go in and Most of these here were shot with the 16. So I'm just gonna go to 16 because it's not a lot of, yeah. Yeah, so I should be able to just. Also too, back to that question about using like seconds with different um, camera systems. I mean like it's not that hard to match the colors. It really isn't. Yeah, it does take a little bit of time, but it it's really not that hard. And when you have a, a preset that's solid, like the Natural Fields preset, like it just, for the most part, I'm putting my preset on and turning up the exposure and it looks fine. And then I'm just making like a little micro adjustment because Fuji's are a little bit more magenta or something like that. And Nikon's are more green or something. And you're just like changing the hue just the tiniest bit and it's like okay that's not so hard so outside of like not really knowing Lightroom I don't really see a reason to be that hung up on different camera systems I'm more concerned of if you can support me well as a second and if you can take good shots that are in focus you know like that matters to me way more than what your camera system is Yeah, Lightroom, 
loads the photos all weird they're like not fully loaded and it almost looks like they're like they're out of focus and it's annoying me I know so many photographers who won't hire you unless you yeah it's kind of annoying that's why like nowadays because sometimes I love the second shoot because it's like an easy way to make a good like four to five hundred bucks for like an eight hour or a day you don't really have to do anything serious you're not the main photog so it doesn't like not everything falls on you it's like so less stressful and all you got to do is show up do a great job shoot the photos deliver the photos and that's it so i still second i second all the time because it's, it's a nice gig it's fun um but i shoot fujifilm so <laughs> I don't get a lot of second photography gigs because people are like, what? I've had so many people be like, you shoot film? No, it's Fujifilm. It's the, it's the company, guys. Canon 5D Mark II and an X-T3, most difficult thing I've had to deal with are matching videos, since the X-T3 is more advanced. Yeah, see, that's a diff Video would be a different subject. I can understand someone being like, nah, because your cameras aren't the same for video, because that's a whole, like everything looks totally different, and it's just, it's a lot. white balance is like different the way the camera handles but it's just all of it's so different unless you're shooting in log or something i guess but so this might be a little harder because i don't have a lot of arm space i can use oh no that's doable we can work with that i'm just gonna get rid of that photo because we have enough of the Shoot a lot of Olympus and Panasonic. People run one <laughs> away when I say micro for thirds. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure people already have a hard time with crop sensor. So micro for thirds. Micro. <laughs> 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 So these photos are a little too cool for my liking. So I'm gonna do a quick adjustment. So that's this stuff up here. The quick develop. You can just literally hit temperature and bump it up just a bit. And now it's gonna hit all these photos with a little bit of temperature. Yeah, with log, yeah, with log you can match like raw. But yeah, the basic, the basic profiles are so different. Like I had someone shoot some video for me recently and he was using like an old Nikon and I just remember looking at the footage and being like, wow, it looks so different than my Fuji, but it makes sense. And Fuji's colors are just like so good. So that's cool, and now I'm gonna sync that across all of these detail shots. Oops, I pressed the wrong thing. Obviously unselect those. She did her own makeup, which is cool. Someone did her hair, but she did her own makeup. Actually, that's right. She's a makeup artist. Duh. I'm an idiot. She, like, does makeup. That's why she hit me up. She hit me up with all the other vendors at the wedding. And I was like, wow, awesome. And I was like, oh, that's right. Because she does makeup. I totally forgot. Like an idiot. Thought about switching to Fuji, but I really don't want to deal with selling all my gear. Yeah.
Yeah, I luckily, I don't get too many photographers being like, too like crazy about what I shoot. But I think a lot of that is because they see my photos and then they're just like, wow. And I'm like, yeah, I do that on crop sensor. And how? And so it usually works out and I still can second, but people are picky. You know what it is? There's a lot of seconds out there. There's a lot of people who grab a camera and they're like, I'm a photographer. So there's a lot of seconds who like compose like they're good. And then they get to the wedding and it's a tragedy. And you're like, what happened? And you know, like, that's no offense to anybody. But it's just hard for the main working photographer who's like paying you. And then gets home and your photos suck. You know, like, that's that's hard. <laughs> you just throw like three, four hundred, five hundred dollars at somebody, and the, like you can do, use like three photos. That's not a fun time <laughs> at all. So I'm not too extra all the time, but sometimes like stuff like this little thing on the side of whatever this is, is annoying. So like I'll try and go in and clean up that type of stuff if I can, and if I have the time to. All right. Still in there here with these bright getting ready or like see how this little piece kind of I don't know what that is so yeah I'm not super picky but if I see something poking out I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get it Also, too, for tips for anyone with editing, like, one of the main things I'm looking for when I'm doing white balance is skin tones. Your skin tones are kind of like the main thing that's going to let you know if your white balance looks good or not. These are about the same. I'll just get rid of this one. I've known photos to other leads. I've shown photos of leads and the like what they see, but then they ask the camera and you say micro filters, yeah. Some people won't budge, yeah. It's it's the worst. <laughs> What's your lowest shutter speed for photos? You're editing no we're in a situation. I, I usually I try not to go under 125th. 1 one twenty fifth. that's like especially because you know it's wedding photography people are moving that's a little too low that's like questionably low at 1 one twenty five. even 1 160 is is also very questionable get those skin tones looking right you're pretty much in the right spot I'm such an idiot because I like saw her putting these on for her sister I'm like wow she's doing the stuff herself and then like, it all makes sense now I'm like oh yeah she was a she's a makeup artist duh no wonder she was doing this no wonder There was one person that complained about me using a 16 megapixel camera when the other photographer was using a 21. <laughs> yeah, it's like, woo, such a big difference. That's like when the X-T3 came out and they're like, it's 26 megapixels versus 24. <laughs> Gotta get it, I need to buy it now. <laughs> 
It's like, no, that didn't that didn't really make that big of a difference. Oh, that's bad. Your flat lays are always so nice. Did you use any of those little props you showed us from the stories? I did not. The ones that elevate, yeah, I didn't on this one, but I, I might buy some actually, or what I wanted, I've been wanting to do a flat lay video for a while. And so I approach my flat lays very differently. I, I call it the scavenger method of doing a flat lay where you just kind of find something that's there. So like there was this table, it was like a full granite table. It was mad heavy, but it looks nice. So I just did that. So I want to show the scavenger method, but I also want to make one where like you bring your stuff. Cause I've seen other photographers who will bring like items and things to help them make their flat lays. Um, so I want to show you like using that method or using scavenger method where you just find whatever's in the room and use stuff like that because i think that's a it's a very useful skill to be able to be like i don't have anything nice but i'll take what i can and make it look nice no matter what um especially as a wedding photographer you kind of need to be able to do that because if you can't you're gonna have a sad time because when things don't go your way you're just gonna be like oh no what do i do like you have to be able to you know, you gotta be able to make it work. That's just half the part of being a wedding photographer. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna black and white this photo. Hello from the Ukraine, hello, welcome. How did you resolve following with tint and Fuji rods? I probably might add rafts to Lightroom, but the tint has a value of... Oh, yeah, the X-T3 is... There's something weird with the X-T3, and I remember when I switched to it, it was like the weirdest thing at first. Um, you have to use this Adobe Standard V2, which I think you can download from their site. You have to use that version, because if not, your white balance is like wrong um my natural fields preset if you picked it up or if you're thinking about picking it up it has an xt3 version of the preset and then like everything else and you can even see that in my presets and how i use them that um when i come look at my presets you have my xt3 color which is the natural presets color for the xt3 and then you just have Fuji color, which is the natural preset, but for any other Fuji camera, because it the XT3 is like that different. So even going back to the whole conversation of matching cameras, even between the XT2 and the XT3, the colors are like pretty different. So that's another reason why I just don't sit here and harp on like my second photographer having the same camera system. As long as you know how to make it look good. If you can take good photos, that's all I care about. People are so hung up on like, it. I don't know, it, it, it gets to me sometimes. It's just like, oh, the specs, the numbers and the specs. And it's like, in a real world scenario though, like what does that change for you, the photographer? Or are you just being sold to and being like, well, it's the best. And because I'm a wedding photographer, I have to have the best for my clients. And like that kind of stuff used to get under my skin when I um when I worked at Apple. And sometimes people would come in and be like, "Give me the best iPad." And I'm like, "What does that mean, bro? What do you mean the best? Give me the best iPad." Well, for me, my little 11 inch, 256 gig Pro is the best. I don't need one terabyte. 12 inches is too big I, I don't need it it's too much for me it's not about price how does it work for you in a real life situation give me the best okay here's the most expensive one <laughs> i just i hate it so much so it's like it's that same mentality towards cameras a lot of the time photographers are just like this is the best one it's the newest one it just came out it has 50 megapixels that's more than 30 
I could go on for <laughs> I could go on about it forever, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go on about it because someone's gonna go in the comments and try and thrash me around. Oh look at that! I'm almost done with this whole section. How nice! Hey, thank you for that sub. They picked themselves a little Bible verse. So this will also be easy to edit because it's pretty general coloring. And then just sync the settings across all of that. When I showed my photos to other photographers that are full frame, they cannot tell my photos were taken with Micro Four Thirds. And they caught, that's what I'm saying, like, like really, most of the time you can't tell them. You just, you really can't. You just, you can't. And then like the little ways you can are like so little, like, yeah, okay, there's a little bit more background separation, but with like crop sensor, you just need a longer focal length and you still get that same background separation. Wow. You know, like, wow, that's so hard, guys. It's not, full frame has its advantages. I'm not hating on full frame. I just don't think like, especially wedding photographers, they just, they hang on to it so hard. Like there's no other way to take photos. You're a wedding photographer and you're not full frame. You must not be a professional. How, how does that work? That's like trying to say, if you play basketball and you don't wear Nikes, you ain't official. Like there's a lot of other great shoe brands out there. It doesn't have to be Nike. Okay, I think we did it. Let's just scroll through and see if my second photographer's shots make sense. And yeah, I don't see anything that stands out, so. And then let's check and see if anything's not edited. Nope, and that's all edited. So we just finished the getting ready bride and the getting ready groom section. That was 103 photos. Blew through that pretty quickly. For you offering wedding albums, and if so, how do you price them? Um, so wedding albums are always a hard subject because they can be kind of annoying to make. Um, I do offer them. I used to include them in packages. I don't anymore because I found that people take forever to get their photos ready like they have to choose the photos they want in the album and it, it's just too much of a process so what makes more sense for me what i'm doing now is i'm giving an album credit and then that credit expires after a certain amount of time so basically if they want an album they can buy it and then they're priced pretty i think my lowest album is around 600 bucks and i give at lowest 150 credit so they're paying like, you know, like 400 something, 500 something dollars for the albums. And then that way the album can happen quicker rather than it being me waiting forever for them and stuff like that. I've never been able to look at anyone's photo and tell if the crop sensor or not. I hear bokeh changes, but yeah. And I mean, you, you can definitely see it if you have side by side photos of like the same photo and one's you know, a 50 mil full frame and the other's 35 crop, which is 50 mil equivalent. You can definitely see it, it's pretty obvious, but like, yet again, if someone just holds up a photo to you and you had no idea what it was, it's really hard to be like, oh, that's crop sensor. And then someone would be like, no, actually it's full frame that I, you know, stopped down to F3, you know, like, Like it's hard, it's hard. You're not you're not gonna see that stuff. You just you're not gonna notice it like that. Cause like it yeah, it's are you good with the lighting? Are you making good photos? You know what I mean? Like do you know photography? <laughs> That's what matters. People be hung up on the wrong things all the time. Uh oh, there goes Lightroom, freaking out. 
when I first got my Canon 5D, people would make comments about how it looks professional because it's huge, including the lenses with the X-T3. People must think, <laughs> that's, what, <laughs> that's what I'd be like too. People are like, oh, look at this guy and his little tiny camera. I'm like, whatever, guys. Look at the lenses. They're so cute. They're so small. Yeah. Look at my website. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I appreciate the basketball shoe analogy. Yeah, I mean, that's that's how I be feeling. Like, really, guys? Because that's really what it is. Photographers don't see it like that, but that's really all it is. Cameras are cameras, just the same way as shoes are shoes. And yes, some manufacturers might do their stuff a little different and you might like it better and that's cool but at the end of the day are you a good basketball player i know if i throw on some nikes i'm not gonna be a good basketball player you know what i mean <laughs> thanks echo for that sub i mean i'm like five foot eight like i can barely i and i can barely dribble i suck at basketball so it's the same thing like we have all these photographers running around thinking that if they get x camera they're gonna be so much better and it's like no man Practice the fundamentals, which you can do with any camera. And then when you get good, find the things that will help you do your job better. And then that camera works for you. Thank you for that sub. Or really know your lens and know your bokeh. Yeah, you have to know everything. This is so true. If you whip out a big 7200 lens, people, yeah, they think, you're, oh, goodness. Super professional. So professional. <laughs> All right, folks. So we just called in photo mechanic today and we went through, sectioned off some of the wedding and finished two whole sections of the wedding, which is actually pretty good. I think that was a total of about 200 some photos or so. So that was about three hours for me. It's pretty good. I got other work to do. I got videos to shoot. I got YouTube to do. I got all kinds of stuff. But thank you for hanging out with me. Um, I saw a lot of y'all. Y'all were in here for most of the stream. So I appreciate y'all for hanging out and watching the stream. I hope you learned some stuff. And like I said, for the next stream, I'm going to edit you all's photos on the stream with the natural fields preset. And let me, let me drop that link for you all again before I leave. Don't forget to submit your raw files for me at that link that I just put up. I'll be editing on the stream. And if you hang out, you'll be able to see your own photos used with the natural fills preset. Maybe I'll do something like a drawing or something. I don't know. Maybe I'll do something fun. Also keep an eye out for the information for my mini workshop in New York. I'm gonna make a video about that and drop that information sometime soon. But I can give y'all a heads up for anyone in the stream now. It's gonna be pretty limited because this is just like a little mini thing. I'm not trying to make it into a big thing. So it's gonna be 15 spots. So if you are interested in coming or if you're in the New York area and you really do wanna come, be ready for it. Cause 15 spots is gonna probably go pretty quick. Um, obviously with the virus going around right now, we'll see what happens. So I'll be refunding people if for some reason we can't do it, but information coming soon, check that out. Thank you again for hanging out. Don't forget to sub if you haven't yet. And I will check you all out next time. All right. Peace.